last piece. I will never leave a guest. If you ain't got no BDS, sacrifice your publish and they said you really need a hook. And they ain't gon' pay you. Said that you receive the look. And what's stupid real is what producers feel. 20 placements or you stuck in that producer deal. On beach chicks, so get it the wireless. All their money goes to hairdressers and stylists. Gotta keep up with that image. Label lose their mind if they ever see a blemish. Proactive in peels, airbrushes and trainers. Manager suggests you fuck a nigga to be famous. Huh? But it's all entertainment Wonder when Cobain blew out his brains Did he blame it? And if those snakes in the industry help him aim it Started pressing up records for the ones that left the chamber Uh-uh-uh, evil Every day I'm living uh, Rest in peace to men, women, and the children uh, And middle fingers to the pilgrims <laughs> that have killed them Friend of the people Do you know Oh my Dunk. god Oh my goodness don't knock over Gino. Right. He's uh, fragile. Yes. Um, yeah, before. Gino can't be here in person, so he's here in spirit. Uh, but, of course, this is the Sneaker Box Morning Show right here on What We're Sports. Of course, I'm your man, the African Caesar. And we've got the rest of the crew here, minus Gino. we got the hype beast of the show, Dunks. Yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> wow. And then, of course, we got the deacon of the show, Guru. What's going on, people? You didn't object to that. Like it's crazy. That's well, two he, weeks in a row. You didn't object to the. It's all right, man. To the uh, description I gave you. It's all good. I got the rest of the show to get at you. Oh, I bet. Okay. Well, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> all right. So, <laughs> so anyway, we got a good show for you. Uh, we got a number of things to talk about. Uh, somebody else left Nike. I uh, didn't make quite the splash as Kobe, but you know, still, uh, uh, I still think it's a negative. Uh, on top of that, we have uh, sneaker fetish coming on as well. Uh, so first. Let's get into some the rest of the show. Follow us on social media. Follow us on Twitter at TSB underscore show. You can follow us on Instagram at the sneaker box underscore show. And you can follow us on Facebook by simply looking up the sneaker, sneaker box radio show page. And uh, make sure, oh, well, I guess I should say this too. Uh, starting this week, we'll be able to take live calls. So if you guys watching live um, and you don't want to just leave a chat, you can call us. Uh, we'll have the number for you. Check our social media um, for the number, and then I'll announce it on next week's show. But you'll be able to call in live as we do the show. So if there's anything that we say uh, that you want to respond to or if you have any other sticker comments or questions, uh, definitely call us at the number that I give you later on this week. Uh, but until then, you can leave us a voicemail um, at 248-677-1803, and we'll get to them on our next show and i believe we have one voicemail that we uh have yet to check in on and before we get into the rest of the show we are actually what nine episodes away from 300 300 mm. episodes that is ridiculous we're like the simpsons hey so we're going for the uh we're going for the record i think osd live i think they did 366 episodes so who's going for that number one spot, but 300 episodes, that's a long time to do a show, especially when you talk about sneakers. I remember when we first started, um, people thought we couldn't make it. Um, nobody thought that a sneaker podcast would work. Um, and I think we started, when we started, we were doing like hour episodes, and then we switched to two hours, because between me and Guru, we can basically <laughs> we can go through oh, hours just like that. So yeah. uh, we switched to two, and I remember people telling us that we couldn't do that either, so... Here we are, what, seven years later, three, almost 300 episodes later, and uh, we're here in this nice studio at Woodward Sports, so never listen to people tell you what you can't do, um, but looking forward to that 300th episode, so hopefully no other pandemics or catastrophes happen <laughs> between now and then. Uh, so I guess we might as well get right into it. Let's get to our five, five sneaker releases from the previous week. Uh, start with number five. We have the Travis Scott uh, Air Jordan Six. Um, I don't know if you saw, but it was his birthday, and he ended up uh, doing a, a re-release. Or some of the raffle winners didn't check out on time, and it was a second drop. So that was kind of cool. Yeah, um, yeah, I, yeah. I heard it was his birthday. I didn't care. Um, Beyond terrible. It, I like them better than the green ones. Actually, I like the green ones uh, better. No, I like the green ones. Unless the I'm, I might be confused or something, but you see the little stash pocket? 
Yeah. I'm pretty sure this brown khaki colorway has it on both sides, where Which the green one only had one side. To me, that's dumb. And honestly, it, it just to me, I, I just imagine people getting frustrated as both because it's on the inside of the foot. So as they're walking, I can imagine both of those uh, stash pockets hitting each other, or, you know, knocking into each other. It's a perfect shoe for I a festival. It's only on the outside. It's on both sides. That's on both sides. Yeah. So but the green ones, I don't the think green ones is just on the outside, which kind of makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, I, mean, I thought the whole point of a stash pocket was to be like obscure, <laughs> like having it like on the uh, open kind of brings mm-hmm. attention to I it. I mean, but, I don't uh, have no problem with it. Like it's a it's a cool colorway. I I tried to get it because I wanted to trade somebody for those uh, my day threes, but I mean, I don't have no beef with it. I mean, the wheat it does resemble the wheat sixes, which were terrible, but this Man. one is not as bad. It lightened up and it made oh, some adjustments, but. Speaking of stash pockets, do we know the first shoe that started incorporating that concept? I want to say the Reebok. No, no, no. I want to say the Reebok question, but it was another shoe. I think shoe. it was the Chad Muska Circus. I have no clue what that is. Uh, Fair. I'm not sure. I have no clue. Now, it was either that. Which one came out first? The Cameron question or the uh, or that uh, currency question? What years would that have been around? Uh, I want to say between 2014, 15. Yeah, maybe? I'm saying Cirque was doing this in like the early 2000s. I didn't know. This. Bro, you like a young I Kimbo Slice over I there. I don't have nothing to stash. <laughs> so. Uh, same, same. <laughs> so, I, mean, I, would, I wouldn't be the best person. I was asked the audience, like, how y'all feel about those uh, Travis Scott Sixes? Yay, yeah, nay? No? Y'all like them? Okay. Yeah, I think. I, His well, four is as bad as Travis Scott, though. Yeah. Yeah. I'm. I just feel like, honestly, uh, the whole Travis Scott thing is, to me, is overdone. Well, don't worry. He's got three more Air Max ones. I know. Uh, yeah, we got the Air Max. And two. No, Jordan he has one more than three. He has like what? Seven Air Maxes coming out at the end of the year. I, Even worse. I like the uh, Air Max ones though. I'm done. I'm over them. Was, <laughs> no, you over his fan base. That too. But, but no, I, I mean, I'm over the shoes though. Like the shoes, like they're not ugly, but it's just kind of. I think the fan base yeah. make you hate his shoes. It's the easy thing. No, yeah, it's, it's definitely that adds to it. I'm just saying, like when I see his shoes, there's like really no thought behind it. It's just, hey, here's some brown. <laughs> there goes Guru. Uh, that's what we started off today. That's how, that's how Shout we out doing. to Adam. That's how we doing it. Picking, quick on his feet. That's how we doing uh, it. All right, I, I see. I see how we getting down. I see how we getting down today, people. Uh, really I just right here chill today. That is, shout out to Adam. Uh, no, I mean the sixes. They're not the worst shoe I've ever seen. They're just kind of basic Plus, and boring. Plus, I mean, me. Jordan Brand don't give you a real rain, free reign over their shoes. So, how much? Seems like they're giving him free reign. You only had the pocket on the shoe. Like that's that's not free reign. Well, I mean, a lot of, to a lot of people, that's creative. You know, so uh, no, I ain't even gonna be mad because Jordan Brand. Swoosh, now, this ooh. was like a, a they let him run sweat. wild on the dunks. I mean, they kind of let people do what they want to with the dunks. Uh, with yeah. Jordans, they kind of they they, really, they are really more really. conservative with the Jordans. However. He seems to do more than most with it. I can't believe I'm saying that, but yeah. Um, yeah, so. Uh, number four, I believe it's the Air Max, the LeBron Air Max 95. Yep. So everybody nope. and mama like this shoe now. Nobody likes 95 for the past five years, and so now everybody and their mama go grab the <laughs> no. shoe. No. I we got an audience, for, by the I way. I entered so size I look, 12 for you, no luck. Uh, man, I, I was, saw these ones. Like, I bet Guru wants them. And now they're going for like, I see all of them on eBay. It's like for 350 I'm like, y'all don't even That's touch it? Air Max 95s. 350 for Air Max 95 No, no, no. I'm saying, like, <laughs> trust me, 350 is a lot. But I'm saying, like, I've seen them going for way more. I've seen I them mean, going for, for like 1000 700 Oh, man. I'm like, right. I can't pay that for no uh, I mean, at this point, nothing surprises me anymore. I mean, the most, like I said, when we saw all white Air Force Ones reselling, I'm like, yo, if that's reselling. I mean, I understand that because I can't be surprised there, by any other you, shoe. Everybody bought this. The resellers bought it, and there's not a really enough big enough. Resellers well, yeah, are just you, buying you, shoes indiscriminately right it's now. It's not even reseller. Remember that post on Twitter that you were commenting on? It's like people. It, it's just fear of missing out. Like people will buy shit they're not even interested in, with the thought process, oh well, if I don't like it, I could flip it on StockX. Oh yeah, shout out to so Rex it's TV. like they're creating yeah. resellers that aren't necessarily in it for profit just people are like well maybe i'll like it maybe i want to follow the hype or like i'll get it in hand then then decide that has even, to be even like me i'm like buy now think later you know, that's I'm the dumbest shit honestly and like listen i you know being young yeah you want to get every release and you know like as a sneakerhead as a collector you want to build up your collection and especially if it's shoes you actually like but this this idea that i have to have something uh that i really don't need and i'm gonna pay upwards between five to over a thousand dollars for 
Fuck that. I'm not, listen, I don't need anything like that unless it's paying off my taxes, my car, uh, some type of school tuition, uh, something towards the house. I ain't got to pay that much for none of that shit. So I don't understand this notion where I have to have these shoes, so I got to pay. The shoes. I love shoes. I mean, we literally built a show around sneakers. So you can't tell me what I don't love. But at the same time, and maybe because I'm getting older and more mature, I don't need shoes like that. Like this, like what is it? Uh, fear of missing out? Yeah. I'm to the point now where it's like if I miss out, I'm like, eh, okay. I, I just mean, missed yeah, out. You really, I mean, for my aspect of it, like the one picture I saw, the guy had like a size run of these. He had posted on eBay with his listing. Mm-hmm. So that's what kind of like a little distaste for him. It's just like now, like them, that wasn't the first one he did. The, uh, the other one was in that old school Cavaliers color with that Air Max 95. And they still want $300 for that. And it's just like, and plus, if you remove the name, that silhouette doesn't demand that much attention. You know what I'm saying? Like Travis Scott's and dunks, even if the dunk wasn't a Travis Scott, you still don't pay overpay for that dunk. Yeah. So I understand in those aspects and instances, but in this one, I really can't. But you can say that about a lot of sneakers. You remove yeah, the yeah, name from a but sneaker. This one particular, like, oh, yeah. yeah so you know what I'm Especially. Like, it's just, it's, it's sad, but you, you're not really missing out because if you can't get a shoe, you could go get it later. And sometimes I've actually waited to get a shoe and got it cheaper than retail. No, this so, is a dope shoe. No, bricks. listen, this is a dope shoe, but I can say that because I actually wear MX 95s. This is a dope shoe. I'm not paying no more than $200 for these. That's it. That's my max for these. I'm not. What do we say? Our salary cap or oh, sneaker yeah, salary, salary cap? cap for sneakers, like, if man. I had to put a sneaker salary cap on a shoe, it would be $200. I'm not paying no more. Maybe $250. What's your, I'm what's not your sneaker reca- salary cap? Overall, $400. That's it. If it's over that, I, I don't need them. I really don't. Like, I swear to God, I don't need a lot of these shoes. Like, I, it's, it's amazing to me how many shoes I'm able to get, especially wearing my size. Um, and then we talked about this a long time ago. Like, you know, you got all the hype releases now. So um, <laughs> you were able to go after some of the shoes that nobody was thinking about. Mm-hmm. Like, I almost got like a, a pair of Pippin 2s until mm-hmm. my man reneged on them. Um, I was able to get a pair of uh, Zoom Generations for like 180 You know, the wheat ones. Yeah. That was you know what I'm saying? So, like, that's where my mindset is now. It's like, okay, if I miss out on, like, let's say those uh, University Blue Forest. Okay, I miss out on them. Cool. Okay, I can take that money and go get something else. A jersey, a hat. A lot of stores, it's delayed shipment, bills. so those will still be dropping. Say what now? The, the UNC Forest are still going to be dropping because a lot of delayed shipments. Oh, bet. It's definitely going to be a restock on those. Um, yeah, so I was... Yeah, the so I, I the hype, man. I, honestly, I think, mine's, I, I, I think mine's like five or six, but I usually use, I manage my shoe collection almost like an NBA team. Like, okay, I buy this shoe, right? And then it's like, okay, this shoe value goes up, and there's a shoe I want for like six, and the shoe I bought at retail is not worth four. I'll trade, put a little bit with it. So in theory, a $700 shoe I theoretically only came out of pocket for for 300 well, That sounds like a reseller mindset to me. No, if I have a shoe, if it's like, there's some, like I have some local ones, right? And it's like, dang, I really want to get this shoe, right? Why not trade and put money with it? I'm not flipping it. I'm not buying this shoe and then getting it. It's just like what made me decide to get, leave the Mocha is be like, okay, in June and May, there's two color Yeezys that I like that are coming out in the same colorway. I know I could get more wear out of this Yeezy than I do this Jordan 1 because I'm on comfort. So that's why, okay, I'm going to let this shoe go put a couple of dollars with it to get the shoe I want, and then I'm not going to lose out on the colorway because I'm going to pick it up in the Yeezy. Man. I do the same thing. That's called reselling. No, I don't. I didn't though. buy that. Sh- I bought this shoe because I liked it, but it's just like I like another shoe that came out even more. I couldn't get it now. If I would have got the shoe that I wanted at retail, then I would have kept the mocha. That's the difference. He's not trying to flip it. He's saying, I get what he's saying. He's yeah. saying, okay, if I wasn't able to get this shoe, or I if I had the choice, I've, like, cause this times where it's like, okay, I could either get this shoe and spend X amount of dollars on it, or I could get both of these. It's unfortunate mm. that's what it comes to, but like, yeah. yeah, you have to do that to to have the collection you want. Yeah, I mean, I agree with it. Yeah. I mean, I, plus I got too many shoes on my wanted list anyway. So, but I'm looking at the sneaker culture. I'm looking at the sneaker game like a, a first time home buyer is looking at the economy. I'm waiting for this bubble to burst, for all these prices to drop because I, 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 it's getting to the point now where everything is four hundred dollars. <laughs> everything It's like, dude. Everything can't be four hundred dollars, like every or yeah, plus. I'd be, yeah, I'd be saying, I'd be saying my uh, my low ball offers. You think I own the Bengals the way I be low, low <laughs> But hey, I remember I said on the show last week that I couldn't find Guru some some Kobe's, right? Yeah. 
We found on some lower Mary and Kobe tins yesterday in his size. Congratulations. And look how I had to do it. I had to save my eBay search as Nike vintage kid shoes, not Kobe's. Not like I had to really be creative with my eBay search. Don't give the jewels away. You know, I think Kobe's wife just made a statement about uh, something special for their daughter's birthday and releasing uh, kid sizing. Oh, this was that was on clothing. Yeah, Uh, yeah, yeah, that was a good today. They ain't got nothing to do with Nike and how they they size run in production, which is unfortunate. But uh, moving on, number three. Number three. Yep, this is the I'm shoe I was going there. for. Air Jordan three. Do you, uh, pick, do you pick the mochas over those? Who you talking to? Yeah. Oh, mocha ones. Yeah. Ooh, no. That's that. No. Now you know why. I did I'm that. I'm surprised <laughs> these aren't selling for more. I know we just said everything's like inflated <laughs> and going more. No, I'm surprised because no. all the demand and hype that was going around, these are only going for like three, four hundred right now. No, I've mm-hmm. seen them for like six. Uh, recently, well, I guess it depends on the size. Yeah, that's eleven and a half, twelve. But what I size do like you that. At? I was looking at the full size run. Oh, okay. Um, of course, like the small sizes sat longer than the big sizes. But what I like about the release is different people are getting different questions to check out. So they at least tried or made an effort. I yeah, idea. I was in line by as long as the Chick Fil A line on on their website. But but once again, oh, like it's a it's a cool system. release. I once again my standard for. Uh, they released Mama C to clothe them for her 15th birthday. Oh, we get the comments now. That's what's up. Yeah. Uh, so my, here's my thing. And Guru knows this, and we debate about this all the time. Like, my standard for collaborations are much higher for general releases because, you know, I'm thinking, you know, when you get an opportunity to do a collaboration, here's your opportunity to do something significant. Or, you know what I'm saying? So, like, I like the story, the premise behind the shoe. I just thought it was just... Ban- bland and basic to me. I mean, simple cool yet shoe. bold. But cool my thing shoe, is, but it was, was so basic. many Jordan threes that have been done. What can you like? What can you do? And to me, it's like a, I mean, I just kind of like that's your job to do. I mean, it was a woman's colorway, but they still made it. I guess they kind of played it safe. I'm more so into they definitely played it the, safe. The, the details, the in interior it. looks real nice. Yeah, the like yeah. those are the things that I took into. But nobody's it. gonna see that when you wear them. So, but. Also, I mean, I'm but also for a as, nice a, interior. as a customer, you gonna know after you wear them five or six times. Okay, these is holding up. These not like your no, normal threes, but yeah. I mean, plus it's Jordan brand, so they ain't but it's like every hey. time we had these conversations, like oh, but that's suede on it. It's like so now that's gonna be like everybody's fallback. Like okay, well as long as we put suede on it, we can look like shit. No, good because they always give not you to new say bucks. Look like shit. No, I'm saying not because they always give you Jordan Brown always gives you new bucks. So when they actually let somebody put suede on the shoe, that's why people react. Like no, that. yeah, I guess. Did so, you check out any of the apparel that dropped with it? Yeah, the apparel was nice too. I liked everything about it. So. I didn't realize it was that big of a collection coming out. I yeah. thought it was just the shoes until yeah. you know, it was launched. Shout out to the ladies. Uh, yeah, all the ladies that couldn't get them. The yeah. Air Force Ones are nice too, though. You see, when they had like when Air Force One, they kind of let you have a little bit more control. They had this they had the lows and highs, right? Yeah, the cold yeah. water, the cold wash or some cold water. Like those I like the really lows nice. a little more, but they yeah, were both those were point. nice too. Yeah, I yeah. regret sleeping on those. Number two, I think we all know what number two is going to be. It's the LeBron Eight Hardware Class. What? Okay, we've got people in the audience shaking their head now. No, <laughs> Guru. I don't want to know why you I, I, I kind of want to know why. <laughs> like, I mean, well, I, honestly, like, I mean, I'll be the first to admit, I've never really been a, initially in the first run. I was never a big LeBron 8 fan. I've come to like them now. And I, I like the I, silhouette, but not that colorway specific. That colorway is hard, especially when it's going with the, uh, the classic jerseys. Mm-hmm. You match that up, man, clean. Uh, a lot of people don't even realize, like, they're calling the Hardwood Classic, even Nike, when in actuality, that shoe was part of his free agency pack. So when they did, that was the year right going into Miami that summer. They didn't know where he was going to go. So they made that color for the Knicks and the white and blue one. They had made a white and another blue one for the for the Dallas Mavericks. And then they had made, like, a black and charcoal and red one for Chicago. Right. So this was initially like a free agency pack, and they had made different. Oh, shoes. so they retrofit in the story. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. they didn't release them. They just, you know, they leaked pictures of them. Like they didn't know where he was going most. So they just made numerous colorways. But I, I gotta say, because we talk about this all the time too, where you know, like I get tired of the same color schemes: white, black, and red, safari, camo. Yeah. Like go down the list, and so when they come out with different colors, Miami. Uh, 
No, I'm not going for the South Beach. I'm honestly, I'm not a big. I, I, like I can't. I was talking LeBron or uh, guys. Was talking LeBron. Was talking I was talking LeBron. to Guru about the LeBrons, <laughs> and uh, I already know you're you're not going to well, like. You these know Guru's going to go for him. I'm not. Yeah, but I, I'm not big big fan of those colorways. That's the first LeBron that ever caught my attention, or I remember it was the first one that started reselling for big money. I don't think people were reselling LeBrons before that colorway. I can't wait until we get to a day where like it doesn't matter what the resale price is. Like when people just go back to buying shit they like. I told you, I had tried to buy a pair maybe six months ago on Go, and it failed their authentication, so I'm glad to see them re-release, but I know no, it's going to be harder than fat. we think. <laughs> but see, you know, growing up in the 90s, most shoes were fat. Oh, like, you know, that's what I'm saying, a big, chunky, oh, so, big. you know. I, if you was around, a lot of them OG Jordans were heavy, like them 7s, them 8s, like the original ones, them, like, they were Yeah, they, heavy. they sat up a little higher. Yeah, the Bun Barclays were heavy back in oh, the day. Oh, boy. <laughs> Ewings. So, yeah, so, I mean... <laughs> I guess I was 90 people. We don't really rap. I mean, you wear a pair of Ewans all day, man. You'd be able to add six inches to your vertical. Yeah, but I was like, uh, I'm looking forward to the uh, to those LeBron low eights. They actually made a high version that was a PE version. I mean, all of this is PEs that they're releasing, but I really wanted the high LeBron eight Miami Knights, but they're releasing the low. So I'm looking forward to both of those and the South Beaches. So. I got to ask this real quick. Adam, did you just think of that at the comments? Dude, like that, that is on the spot. I love you. Mm -hmm. That is, I love that. <laughs> Let's keep that. Um, and so, I, well, we knew what number two was going to be, so I think we all know what number one is going to be. You're not passing. And that's the Air Jordan University. Air Jordan for University Blue. Uh, a lot of people took L's and E's, and a lot of people got not W's. Not dunks. So how many bots you use? Bots didn't work. I, the last four or five cops I've posted, all manual. Good. I'm happy to hear it. You know what? Even Shout though out East Point for this one. Even though I didn't get a pair, even though I didn't get a pair, I'm happy to hear that. I'm happy to hear that. Like, you know, keep in mind, I lost my bot job being here, so I don't have as much access. <laughs> uh, and ironically, they were called the shit the bot, which is also TSB, but uh -huh. now I'm only repping this TSB. So I've got a lot of DMs, messages. I'm no longer associated or affiliated with the shit bot, unfortunately. Well, okay. So well, sure. don't ask for help. I can't. We appreciate the sacrifice, Dunks. Hopefully. Yeah, hopefully. Um, so anyway, Jordan 4. You're terrible. You, you know got that? a pair? <laughs> I, I didn't know how to finish that sentence, so I was like, "Jack it so yeah, hopefully." Yeah, hopefully. I didn't know how to finish it. I was, just like, I was just like, "Okay, well, instead of wasting more time trying to figure Man, out what, hope you what word to say we next." We wish you much success, even though one door closes, another one open. We hope you do great. Who knows? We might end up on ESPN. I don't know. Oh no, no, I'm content. Uh, I'm just saying, like in terms of bots, like, I'll still run them, but I'm not like actively working with or affiliated with any company. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, going back to these shoes, though, I mean. What can you say? I mean, these are probably one of the best fours I gotta ask in you, a Ru, long time. How do you feel when I call these Broke Boy Trav Fours? The what? The Broke Boy Travis Fours. Nah. 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 Hey, well, black, nah. You don't have to be broke to like, it's not a Broke Boy shoe. Like, I hate blood. Oh, these well, just like a common term broke, thrown around right now. Bro, yeah, like, that's what I'm saying. Like, I'm the broke boy the term, ones. Personally you, but the term, because you, you have, I heard other people say, it's like, Oh, these are true. The Mochas or the broke Travis Scotts. It's like they kind of were though. Broke because the same person who got a, who can afford the Travis Scott at retail can afford the Mocha one at. But it's retail. not about being able to afford. It's, it's just, just you know, like when you say poor man's, it's like okay, like here is this shoe, and then here is this the younger brother. But here's my if, of this if, shoe. for the people. This is what happens when a lot of people get in the game and they don't know no better. Like if you have some phone positive pros. Technically, if you want to use that terminology, yeah. those are poor man phone positive pro, phone positive pros are poor man phone positive ones. We agree. That's the same, you know what I'm saying. But <laughs> no one says that about the phone positive pro. That's just Nike's way of making. I mean, the same way with the so, Mocha. So, That's their way of capitalizing the, and, on the shoe that they. Even and with, not but we, well, we know the story is kind of yeah. significant in that because. Well, you know what? The phone positive one, they didn't have too much Nike Air branding except on the uh, the. But they did toe. the phone positive pro because. And that's why they did the pro because they don't have to pay penny royalties. That Bingo. is why, because that's why they made the pro. Bingo. So even the glove, the Zoom Flight 98, the glove I wore a couple of shows back, they made a watered-down version called the Son of a Glove. It was leather upper. Look Son at the Jordan 4. So like, like, that's why they came out the Flight 89. So it's, like, 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 it's, it's like, come on, man. It's like, the, the people who like Flight 89 <laughs> can clown the Jordan 4 people like y'all. That's a knockoff. So, I mean... I, don't know, I guess I've been around the black so much. I've seen everything, so it don't look like a poor man. Either you like it or you don't, because it's some Spizikes that I like more than Retro Jordan. So I mean, you're the only other person I know that likes Spizikes. I don't. I, mm, I'm uh, good on Spizikes. So I like the I like the original colorways. The the black, the, green, red, the yeah, white, and blue. Spizikes, the zeros, and the gray ones. ones. I, I, I had some cool do. gray ones. That was like a bad. That was like I a like the bad zeros, stretch but I never for owned Jordan a pair. Bear. That because that was around fusion time too. Uh, 
I, I mean, I liked it because it would had remember they had the metal tags on it. It was like paying homage to Spike commercials. Like it made sense. And then listen, the story behind it, listen, the concept, tags. the story behind it is not in question. It's the execution. I don't, I don't think it was bad. I don't mm-hmm. think it was bad. We disagree I, like, on that. I like it. That's not every color. I, well, I, might, I definitely I might get I, the Nelly ones. I remember <laughs> buying my first pair from uh, Revive. I think that's the first thing I copped there back in high school. And the do the right thing colorway, you ain't like the. Oh my goodness! That I don't like nice, the original all, run. And I'm not talking about that twenty. What was that twenty sixteen? There was a, run? a black and no, yellow. It, most hybrids, pair. I'm not Iris, really feeling. Yeah. It's very few hybrids that I feel. I think the last hybrid that I liked was the uh, Iris and Legacy. You like them over the Spitzikes? Because they actually made yes, yes. Ah. Those actually look like decent shoes. The Spitzikes is just a mess. <laughs> Dog, I My spits likes are a mess. I got the Just paint a, peeling. Oh, she's shaking her head a lot. You shaking your head too much. No, I, <laughs> it's I, the spits likes were never doing it for you me. You know, bro. back back in like somebody took it? the best elements of all these shoes and made one bad shoe out of it. Back so you don't like it. the six rings? No. I, here's my thing. <laughs> we agree. Like, no, hell I, no. I feel like to me, what really the hybrids will live in a better space is when they retro it. They don't. They literally, you talking about overkill? Like the original ones, like 06, 07 around there, right? You had the black and red ones, right? And then you had the city pack where you had the Jazz, yeah. you had the Sacramento, and then Seattle well, like, and Phoenix, right? Yeah. Here's is what it did it for me, and this is what really turned people off, is that now, even when, the, when I'm in the store, They've made a hair colorway. They've made a carmine colorway. They've made a cool gray colorway. Bring, They've made a concord. They made a metallic gold. Yes. And what's even worse is the price has went up ten dollars, and they sell out. I've never seen them. All. I'm ten years, ten years working the sneaker game. <laughs> what I just tell you? Again, like they've never seen. Keep it up, man. Look at the guru's a, face. He's shocked. Uh, I don't want to do rag no boy. Okay, I got you, man. We're going to put out one of these Backstreet Boys for you, man. You know what I'm saying? We say, show, show his face. Show his face. You got your, show your face. Come on. Show, show your face, man. Come on. Nah, nah, you can post a picture. You want to show your face? Come on. I already on. know which Backstreet Boys. I told you. Before you send shots, I check my it. return policy. You I know what I'm saying? It. Adam, like, keep, he, hey Adam, keep it going. God, keep it going. No, I'm saying he's feeling but real yeah, good. That what you're hilarious. saying about the fusions, I mean, I, I think most of the culture or society would agree because, like, 05, 06, I remember the black, red, green spizzics we were just talking about. Uh, it, even early in the resale days, they're going for like four hundred dollars, and now they they retro them and they're sitting on clearance racks. But here's my thing with the fusion: and I agree with Guru. Like the fact, like especially with the six rings, they try to come up with all the eleven colorways, like all red and cool gray. Broke boy like, No, like it, it, and that's and that adds to that argument. It's like okay, you're trying to capitalize off the similarities of the elevens, and that's one horrible. Yeah. Two. To me, it's a lack of creativity when you can't think of anything else but just kind of hodgepodge and uh, designs you've already done already. I don't have a problem with it when it's done with a purpose, right? Like, that was commemorating the, the shoes that he won rings in. You had packs with the shoe, like the DMP pack, his first and second ring. So that, that made sense. The Spike Lee's doing that. He's a Jordan brand affiliate. You want to commemorate all the commercials that he did. That makes sense. Now, them son of Mars? <laughs> I'm so Mars. So Mars is, I don't like them either. That, like, that was terrible. And people like the Travis Scott ones with the strap on. I guess the guy uh, customized. Of course they do. They was drooling up. Nobody's these, surprised but y'all wouldn't touch that. the Son of Mars. Man. Nobody, man, surprised by that. I mean, I'm but that was, it was shocked. another one when they combined the 16s, 17s, and, 17s, and the sixes with the music notes and shit. Oh yeah. my goodness, that was terrible. Like two color, and that's the funny part. Two silhouettes that y'all already had trouble selling anyway. You don't combine those two but things. They, but my thing is. Even it looks terrible. Two ugly people having a baby for? ain't gonna make a cute baby. What was the purpose? Well, that, for? there's phenotypes and genotypes and, and Punnett squares, and there is a possibility. Oh, I'm just saying, uh, it's just not in your face. There's still what? hope. There's <laughs> still hope. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man. But. Uh, I, well, I think we're gonna agree on this next shoe, the ugliest release of the week. Ah, oh, I got jokes. That's one of my favorite favorite fucking specific colors. That's what I'm saying. It's not I a bad looking shoe. No, I can't do it. Yes, it is. It's not a bad looking shoe. Uh, it's my Christmas fucking sneaker. Ugliest <laughs> release of the week is the Jurassic Park. Reebok Instapunk Fury. Mm. I didn't even see these till now. This is first of all, Jurassic Park came out when? Uh, the new when one did that one like four years ago? Four five years. Right, like, nah, like who, who? Who's asking for a Jurassic Park sneakers? I'm like, nobody. Nobody was asking for the shoe. Reebok, this is two weeks in a row. Y'all have made the ugliest release of the week. You are not in a position to be dropping this many ugly but shoes. It's Adidas' fault, man. You know they don't got. Uh, maybe Adidas is trying to lower. The, you would think they be trying to put out dope shoes because they're trying to sell them. 
you think they try to up the price. Maybe Reebok is self-sabotaging. I don't know. Yeah, but no. Nah, this I is horrible. This is two it. weeks in a row. Y'all made that atrocious sneakers. That's a, I got my I mean, answer five. Absolutely atrocious. atrocious. <laughs> I got my answer fives on. So y'all redeem. C's hate y'all this week, but I don't. Man, I don't hate y'all. Like y'all y'all ain't give me nothing to love though. Like dude, like put that shoe back up. Last week with them answer fours though. Huh? He was in love with them last week with them answer fours. When they do when people do dope things, I <laughs> I congratulate them. And when they do shit like this, we talk about it. Like, how do you drop who once again, dog, how does this sit in the table at Reebok headquarters? People come in and say, Yeah, we dropping this. Nobody objected? Nobody. It looks like uh, green eggs and ham. People put ketchup. Dude, this on. looks stupid. This is the dumbest shoe I've ever seen in my mm-hmm. life. Okay, dumbest Hold shoe of twenty twenty. Because I'm gonna come back next week. It was some dumbest shoes. Gurus, dumbest shoes ever. Well, maybe let's do a list of it. This That'd is definitely. This segment. is gonna be an honorable mention at the very least. I don't. No, I don't get it. I really don't. I really don't get how these brands. You over there sweating because it's so ugly. Dog, like my <laughs> eyes. My eyes want to jump out of my skull right now. I gotta like. Like they want to be anywhere but fixated on this picture. Mm. This is the worst. Mm. This is definitely one of the worst Reebok shoes ever. This is definitely one of the worst Reebok Insta pumps ever, if not the worst. They had those alien stompers. I forgot what silhouette. Those are stupid too. The honestly, Grinch, they did the Grinch ones too, and they did the. Tom That's a nice Jerry novelty shoe, but like honestly, who's wearing those on a regular this basis? This shoe should only be released in original colorways. Like outside of Halloween, who's wearing that? I mean, they did a Ghostbuster shoe. Yeah, this is dumb. Speaking of these, once again, who was like? W- is, is there a new Jurassic Park coming out? You never know. Anytime soon? Well, you know, I, even if, okay, even if there was a movie coming out, those there are stupid are. too. Like, I would have those, I would have those strictly for collector purposes. There's no way I'm walking Ooh, around the streets. I would collect those. Say what? You collect those? I'm just saying, I'm just playing devil's advocate. Oh, no, you ain't play if no you are a collector, you are going to collect some weird things. That don't mean you're necessarily going to wear them, but as a collector, okay, uh, you know, especially somebody who's into the history of certain things, you're going to collect it. You collect shoes and not wear them? No, I'm just saying, uh, I'm uh, talking. Uh, uh, there's, I've, one pair of I, shoes, there's one pair of shoes I have that I will not wear. Actually, two. There's two shoes that I have that I won't well, wear. Well, on that topic. Like, I can't name my two shoes? <laughs> <laughs> we need so a fucking bell, man. To talk to me. Go ahead. Oh, no. Okay, so real quick, real quick, so Dunson get out what he has to say. You know, no so, one ever stops you or cuts you off, so let me have it there. We cut you I'm off for once. Saying. Carry on. Carry, I'll let you speak. I'll let you speak. Gino, get your boy. Look, uh, man, we're I am athlete. They be like, let me finish. Let me finish, Brandon. Let me finish. I'm saying he just cut me. All right, so no. So the two shoes that I won't wear are the Barry Sanders joints mm-hmm. that they came out with, what, last year? Mm-hmm. Those and then you remember the um, flight ninety sixes that they dropped for Allen Iverson. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. and they had to like mm-hmm. uh, snatch back. Mm-hmm. Those are the two shoes because I know chances are they'll never make that sh- either one of those shoes ever again. <laughs> Y'all are terrible for this. Ever again. <laughs> it took me a lot of time. See, Gino's caught in the middle. I can He's... tell by the way you cut the edges at the top. <laughs> Dog. <laughs> it was more complicated. He cut that with a butter knife. Yeah, he put y'all got mascara on Gino. That's why his neck and his his face two different colors like these chicks out here. Man, man, please Horrible. y'all go get y'all makeup done. Please uh, make sure it's blended right. Pick out the right color foundation. Make sure everything look. Cause I be looking at y'all. Your face be so like your face be looking like a pecan pie. Then you get down to your <laughs> neck, it looks like an apple pie. Like you make sure it line up right. You know, go to Sephora. Every makeup artist on Instagram be having y'all caked up, and I ain't talking about cheese. It be just looking like you can't even smile. Just make sure it's done right, ladies. All right? Wow, that's it. Guru's PSA. But. Wow. Hey, something I want to touch on real quick though. Yeah. Uh, owning or collecting shoes that you'll never wear. If you find something from like the early 2000s and you know it's gonna crumble, but you've always wanted it, yeah. Like personally, I'd still buy it and just not wear it because I don't want it to crumble. I still wear it. If it crumbled, then I got story. Well, to there's tell. some there's some like skate shoes that aren't made as nice that it. Like I just bought a pair of America Reynolds ones. Guaranteed, if I put them on, they're gonna crumble. So it's. No, I get that. Like if you know it's gonna crumble, then I can understand not wanting to wear them unless you are able to, uh, you know, restore them somehow. Uh, I gotta wear my shoes. I work too hard. I be searching too hard. Well, yeah. First of all, I'm not <laughs> gonna buy a shoe that crumbles. Unless it gotta be something significant. Uh, like I, well, I got those two. The first Dennis Rodman's. I forgot what they're called. The worms or something. I can see that. That's worth it. If anyone's got those in a size 11, I'd buy them. There you go. Uh, I'm trying to think. Should I get to the sneaker news or should I do this? So I, I redid our segment. You know that segment we did coming soon. We talked about the shoes that were coming up. Mm-hmm. So we redid it. I want to do it. We, we're now calling it our buy or buy. 
So like buy like purchase or buy like buy Felicia. Um, but I really want to get to the sneaker news because we well, got this, sneaker this, fetish okay, coming out a lot. We are in our sneaker looking mode. I guess we can do this by now. Okay, let's we'll jump right into it then. Uh, so the first shoe we have the and these are coming out soon. There's no set release date for them. Just kind of want to keep your eyes peeled. Uh, so we got these sneakers and stuff. Special edition Adidas Ultra Boost 40 T time. What do we, what do we call this? A fusion? You guess you could. I like them. Good. I don't hate them. You know what? I'm gonna say bye. I'm gonna say bye. Mm, yeah, all right. I'm gonna say bye. Yeah. I ain't buy or buy. I get them on sale. You know like I, I will purchase these. I will I buy these. Say I'll definitely purchase them. Yeah. Uh, this next shoe. The Matthew M. Williams Special Edition Nike Zoom MMW 4-Pack. These are all shoes that's about to come out? Yeah, these, these are all about to come out. Nope, uh, nope, nope, yeah, nope, yeah, nope. Yeah, well, yeah. That's not the shoe I just named, though. And those are the Griffey Pack or something? Yeah, but that's later on the list. I mean, I think we all know what we're going to say on those. No, the Matthew M. Williams. Oh, Adam was doing such a good job. Damn. Sounds like we got easy back here. Quick, fill up another Kimball Slice pick. Uh, <laughs> Keep playing. <laughs> Keep playing with me, though. <laughs> it's probably the uh, like the ugliest shoe. Did I not identify these shoes? I didn't. Okay, my bad. Sorry, sorry, Adam. I take blame for this. It's a horrible pair of shoes, though. It's like black and orange. It's like two shoes, black and orange. No, but just as ugly. Mm. So this is why I should have did sneaker news. I could have sworn on something picks. Those. Uh, no, There's no. an orange pair, too. Is this one of the ISPA's sneakers? Kind of, sort of. Yeah. But this is his spin on it. This looks like... Uh, Bye, Felicia. Uh, <laughs> this I, is yeah. definitely a buy. Like, no. some tanks. I got some weird taste, and I can't even but fuck with these. This look like... Mm-mm. Like if Batman was, like, oh, getting in shape. Batman. I forgot well, who posted it. This is like Hulkbusters. Look, I wish my son was here. <laughs> that like, does. Yeah, those are Hulkbusters. <laughs> I forgot who posted it, but it was trending. Uh, the Michael Keaton Batman movies. I think the boot was originally made from a Jordan 6. Yeah, we talked which, about it before. Uh, well, I didn't, I didn't know that. that before you got cool. the show. Yeah, sorry. Well, I just learned 20 years late, and I thought it was awesome. <laughs> uh, the next pack, the Nike King Griffey Jr. Collection. Now nah, you can show it. There you go. Yeah, this is a yes. I want every shoe in this around. pack. Yes. I'm really personally only like in the Air Max 90s. I shouldn't say that because now everybody's going to be buying up all the 15s. What'd you say? For me, it's the Air Max 90s over all the others. Ooh, Actually. no, I'm going with the Griffey Max 1s. No, I like the Griffey Max 1s, but be my, my Air Force 1s are really nice too, though. They too simplistic. Especially the back detail, really nice. I like the Griffey. If I had to go in order, it'd be the Griffey Max 1s, Griffey Max 1s, the 90s, the Vapor Maxes, and then the Air Force 1s. I'm not feeling mm. the Vapor Maxes at all. I'm in this digging collection, I'm I have to say Griffey's Air Ones, Air Max 90s, and then the Vapor Maxes. Oh, no, the Griffey's nice, hard, though. I guess I wouldn't, if I bought the, the Griffey one first, I guess I'd buy the Air Force One because the Griffey one, the Air Max 90, got the same colorway placement. So that's why uh, I wonder if they're gonna drop them on the same You really day, do it? treat your shoe collection like a team strategically, yes. I wonder if they're going to drop all the <laughs> shoes in the same day. Now i got to think, like, strategically, yeah, what so. do I have the better chance of getting? I mean... Because you know everybody's going after the max Nike, ones in the Nike 90s. You're a brand ambassador, so I don't know why you even ask yourself that question. Oh, get out of here. I wish I had it like that. I just told you what, I told you what happened before you the show. like we don't have these episodes recorded when you we mentioned all don't, your gifted man. gifts. Man, Nike don't love me. <clears throat> this next shoe, uh, the Nike Dunk Low New York versus New York. No, mm, but you know mm. what? Since it's up there, Dang, let's talk about it. it. <laughs> there it is. Uh, that was a nice definitely buying those. Well, are you going? Are they accessible? Nope. No. That's, well, yeah, that's not the question. <laughs> like, okay, if I had a chance to get these, would I get them? And I would say yes, definitely a Do yes. You, I feel like I, saw, I saw a pair of dunks for two hundred dollars. I'm like, I guess with me, I'm like that. Shoes. You one should have shot your shot. Not that, but here's the thing, though. It's just like when you wear it a couple times, how bad it's going to crease. I don't know. Some Jordan ones, it's a you rep can beat them up picture. and they look good, but I don't it's know how it is with ducks. Rep guide? I don't know who that is. Probably fake. Okay. Well, until then, I like the story on the Vapor Maxes more than the shoes. Yeah, I think that was number four on everybody's list. Yeah. Out the pack. Uh, so uh, he put it up already. Got the Air Jordan Retro 6 Low Sunset. Um, I'm straight on those. I'm, I'm not a big not fan of Jordan Six Lows anyway. 
So man. it really takes an act of God for me to like buy into it. Uh, I, I feel like I've seen these already. I don't think the low should have that lace lock system. You know what it is? Those Gatorades. Mm. They 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 close they too closely resemble the Gatorades. Like that transition from orange to yellow ain't doing it for me. In enough for me to be like I gotta have these. And does anybody really want a Jordan Six Low? I do the black and silver ones. They already came out with those. But that's what I was like, do you want a Jordan Six Low? Like, okay, like, but do you want more colorways? Nah, okay, nah, it ain't that the, colorway. No, right. <laughs> Uh, oh, they had the. Ba- I take the baby blue one though, the white and baby blue one they did. I'm good on that those too. Like, well, I take those. Yo, just give me the OGs. Just give I'll me that. And I'm done. Uh, this next shoe it drops in June. By the way, if you're looking for the sixes, they drop in May sometime. This well, this month. So, uh, the next shoe drops in June. The Nike Dunk Low N7. Nice. Uh, they got moccasin vibes. But I'm I mean, well, yeah, it's based on Indian, Indian. But I'm not Native feeling Indian. them personally. Native so, like, Americans. based on that theme, I don't hate them. I'm not buying them, but I ain't mad at nobody. Remember who that Reebok question they tried to do with the braid on the side? That was horrible. That was the what worst idea. What if they idea. actually had braided the Q in the back like that? No, that might have been dope. That would have been dope. That might have been dope. Aside from the moccasin vibes, there's an SB dunk that's based on like a, a car seat cover, and it's kind of kind of similar to this as well. Right. So, nice but I'm not feeling them. But no, I, I think this is for what they were shooting for. I think these are dope. Like I said, but I'm not buying them. I imagine it's like the Native American people who will be upset because they can't get them, and they'll see like somebody that's non-Native American on the internet selling those. I think they'll be very upset. Yeah. Mm, it's Almost reminiscent of their history in the country. I was gonna say I was, <laughs> I was, I was like, trying not to touch the, on it, but yeah, since you the went land, there, then y'all took the sovereign land, which y'all drilled underneath holes and oil underneath it. Then y'all take the shoes. Yeah. Now nah, I be telling, come over here, sit right next to us, South African Americans, so we can share stories. <laughs> <Right. laughs> <laughs> so all right, let me console. It's all right. They don't like us. They don't love us like that. Uh, coming out in July, you got the Adidas GZ Foam Runner Ochre. Mm. Horrible, dog. What the fuck? Like, honestly, mm. this. You know what this tells? Okay, first of all, I like them. Right, let me sit back because it's easy. When like, people, no, nah, because Grammy you know speech. what it is. Go ahead. People buy these shoes. All it, all you're doing is letting people, letting the brands know that you will buy anything. But if like, you, that's the, all you're doing. People were doing that before the phone runners, though. No, but this is like, this is the cherry on top, bro. But, like, this mean, is the, the butterfly that landed on the house that the you build and collapsed. The made these possible. Yeah. The people about, love for the croc made this possible. But the croc existed within a certain space. But you those know what people I'm saying? are spinning Like this space. shit, now people act like they got to have, like people wouldn't act like they had, they had to have crocs before. No, now all of a sudden, now all of a sudden they got to have these I mean, they look worse than Crocs. Crocs. Like, yeah, I Crocs see, like, open. middle-aged women wearing those. They, you know, they just want to walk around the house or, they, you know, they they're going to run side or. They're going to run ducks into the ground. God damn right. People, <laughs> people buying the Crocs and coming to the store. I don't got the happy I love you pins. What are you guys doing here? It's like, my dog. Do we look, like, not, do we look like a giving a souvenir shop? Well, I'm saying, like like the, the Crocs like, had a certain customer base. Now it's transitioned. This is that, they're taking from that customer base. <laughs> but it's, now it's transitioned to sneakers. Hey, and Nike is, Terminators. This is terrible. horrible. They're all red ones. No, I ain't ones, seen the colorway of this shoe yet. That was dope. Well, I, like I said, I would wear this to the beach or to like a poolside. That is it, and that's only one color. You need to wear it right ones. to the garbage can. Nah, I ain't wearing those. I, wear, I agree I, with Guru. I wear I wear flip flops when do. I take the trash out. I yeah, I just don't, don't have Gino uh, today. Uh, but you gotta yeah. slip these on and put your finger in the bag, and then you gotta take them off like, <coughs> like this. Like I said, man, like y'all They're just letting flexible. the brands know y'all will They're buy like, anything. I just can't. Y'all will buy anything as long as it has a certain person's name on it. Nah, I did. You probably buy these. They came with an Aquaman movie ticket. <laughs> <laughs> that was random. Because like, it's like some shoes you can swim in. That's why I said that. Oh, this shoe is horrible, bro. Yeah, he like, like we already it. said, this is like Superman spaceship. Yeah. This is the dumb, like honestly, like I can't even look at this shoe and take anybody seriously. I see mm. people wear these on foot, and I, I'm telling. What's you, worse is when you people wearing them to the store with, with socks high top on, socks. Like like that's terrible. Like if right. you buy a shoe like the Crocs, people buy them. To in between walking, some nurses do like when you see that shoe being wore for its intentional purpose. Or like, like, shots like, are like Adam, who well, side you somebody wore some Crocs to the club, like dog. That's not no. The here's my that. that's my point who, though. Like, who just went to the award show? Mm-hmm. Someone at the award show just had yeah, an all, Crocs, all gold yeah. pair. Listen, we all know people buying these shoes for fashion, which I, I question your fashion sense, but. They wearing it for fashion. They ain't wearing it for comfort. Like, the comfort is an added bonus. Uh, I would say the Yeezy customer base is a 50 50. No, it's an added bonus. It's an added nah, bonus. No, because a lot it's of people hate the Yeezys. Because if Yeezys were uncomfortable, they'd still be wearing them. Mm. 
Because mm, they still wear Jordans. Much, not as much. Or, not as much. And Jordans right, so, are still uncomfortable. Interesting <laughs> point, though. I'm part of the Yeezy fan base, right? And the yeah. 380s are hands down the most comfortable Yeezy. Yeah. But I don't like how they look. So like, I, I don't that's think the, that's, that's the only deciding are, factor. But the people uh, who are I don't even Connor, understand that. Like, they say, like, I didn't like it, but when I tried it on, it made me roll with it. So I don't like his appearance the best, but the comfort made me buy it. I don't so know, even like, when, I don't uh, agree with that logic because the lawyer dude was coming up in here. He said, "I never was into Yeezys, but I tr- they so comfortable it made me want to buy them." If that was the reason, like people would be, there's much more comfortable shoes that are like lesser name brands that people ain't even touching. New Balance. Sketchers, thank you. New Balance is Skechers steals everybody else's design. So why buy a Skechers who's still? What does it matter? If it's all about comfort, it don't matter about the design, nah, right? If it's the same. If that's shoe, the argument you're making. If your argument you're making, why would I, why would I buy say, don't a shoe wear from Skechers? Because you have a better chance of like getting a Nike it? shoe. This don't look like no other shoe. Listen, people are buying. Wait, wait, we just talked a couple of episodes ago. People are buying fakes. They're buying UAs. They're buying super perfects. So no, no like some not girls. No, let's not act like that girl. No, yeah, she did. But no, but even Nike will acknowledge that the uptick in fakes are happening mostly because people are having access to the shoes, so they can get away with a uh, uh, UA and. You know, look like they still have the shoe. Then yeah, I mean that's a it. that's a darn near carbon copy with like. I'm just that, I'm saying, like, like if the argument is well, you know, is comfort over looks. Then, I mean, shit, like people and not every Skechers is a ripoff. So there's other Skechers that are comfortable that like Skechers, look like you see some of the Skechers. I went to go try to get my grandma, my grandmother some. They're like a ninety hundred and one ten dollars, two hundred ten dollars for some Skechers. Yeah, what? A hundred up to one hundred and ten dollars, twenty dollars for some Skechers. I mean, Skechers are look. Skechers are actually pretty good. I'm like, not honestly. wearing no carbon on Skechers when I can get some. Well, like you talk to people that are not one. like outside hey, of sneakers. This price point is very low as well. Outside yeah, of sneakers, I think it's seventy dollars. Yeah. Outside of sneakers, like a normal person loves Skechers. Like this is why Skechers was like the number two brand for like the longest time. And I refuse like, to believe that. Yeah. What? I, people don't like Skechers. Yeah, like Skechers. dude, they making money. Like they're not in the they like for children. No Maybe like children no, who don't. There buy are their grown own people stuff. that wear Skechers. Like especially yeah, people. They, thank you, people that's thank you, people that's on their feet a lot. Love those from Skechers. Mm. I hear about Skechers all the mm. time. We don't hear about it because within sneakerdom, it's all about Puma, Jordan, Adidas, like the known brands. Outside of that, we ain't giving a shit. Yeah, I think, but it, it's, it's, it's a not certain, my argument. Like, yo, there's that's, other comfortable shoes, but we're not gonna give them a chance because their name Skechers. I now, would rather shoot. Myself you know, we'll wait for a Yeezy to come out with a Croc before we actually wear a Croc. Is there something wrong waiting for your favorite brand to come out with a comfortable shoe? I'm just saying, like, if you're gonna, are you talking about ripoffs? Like, yo, it, Croc's been doing this for a long time. I, I do about see them? the goldfish. No, yeah, they definitely look like the goldfish. Which looks more like a goldfish? The, this or the uh, the D Rose Yeezy sneaker we showed? They're both up the D Rose, the D Rose sneaker, that Yeezy sneaker. Word. It looks like is the dog. The it looks shape like, is like a goldfish, like, but uh, the color it looks off. like a swordfish. Like when you slice it, shoes like that I'm just make you like this one in the myself, show. So. It's like, what's the point? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> it's like y'all gonna buy whatever they tell y'all to buy. Who? Not you. I'm just saying people in general. Like y'all just gonna buy whatever they buy. If Adidas drops, like that's why I made the joke. Like they could drop a turd with three stripes and people will buy it. Same thing for Jordan brand fans. True. So I mean that True. goes for the whole community. So, True. I mean. No, I'm not saying like it ain't just the Yeezy thing. You're right. Like they do it with Jordan too. We just got through talking about the Travis Scott, uh, such and such. And so like, the such point such is such. they drop? can literally put their logo on anything drop? and most people will buy it, huh? Who knows? Drop. What the Travis Scott? Travis Scott such and such is. Sometime soon, one mm-hmm. a month. Man. They're, they're on. Our, they're, they're coming up next. Okay, go ahead. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Horrible. Uh, this next shoe comes out this uh, spring summer. You got the ambush Nike Dunk High Deep Royal. Mm. I I'd buy it. <laughs> of course. Mm. I. It looks like a Clico cup in the back. It looks like a what? A Clico cup. Oh. <laughs> it does. You never had a Clico cup? You hey, never been yeah, to a party? Stack, stack it's a red cup. Shit. People drink yeah. at parties. You didn't know those Clico cups? Oh, okay. Like a solo right, cup? Look. Hey, yeah. Like a classic cup? Yeah, solo cup. cup. Solo cup? Solo. Are we saying the same thing? But yeah, it was the Clico was made them first. And solo, oh, okay. yeah, Clico cup. yeah, I used to play a little beer pong. I don't... Uh, I'm not going to buy these. See, you play beer pong? No. no okay, yeah, me neither. We got it. You know, this is a perfect length table if you guys want to get a game going. I'm not in a beer pot. I can't. Y'all, I try. you drink out of the cup that the ball falls in. No. Oh, I've I seen people do that. That's I was in a like, fraternity. I, like, I know okay. better. I've yeah, seen be some off terrible tomorrow, things. <laughs> <laughs> nah, that's just crazy. COVID-related nah, symptoms. <laughs> no, I, that was I don't. Ha- here's the crazy part. I don't hate this shoe. I just, I don't know how to feel about it. And I'm just like, I'm straight. I'm good. Because you run out of feelings after the two Yeezy shoes. Yeah. Maybe I ain't got no, <laughs> I ain't got no more fucks to give. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's see what we got. 
Uh, we got the Nike Dunk Low White Free 99 that comes up this summer. This I, slightly um, reminds me of that eBay shoe. I'm straight on these too. Like, mm. I know I know Dunks are hot right now, but I don't mean that I gotta buy every single pair and every single pair is dope. Um, this ain't doing it for me. I'm, I'm just, torn right down the middle. I, I like them. They know. I'm not saying they're horrible. I'm just saying like, that's not doing it for me. They're not moving the needle for me. I'm. I'm like okay, huh? that's nice. nice. It looks like a, a Nike ID someone made. Kind it of. It really does. It really does. And then this next, this last collection is the Nike Dunk Next Nature. Um, mm. The highs look dope. I mean, you know what? The highs look cool. I ain't gonna say dope. Dope is too strong of a word. They look all right. You like these over the lashes? Yes. Mm. Plus, I'm not a big low fan anyway. You notice I said the highs. That's what I'm talking about. The yeah, highs. I'm not a big fan of the lows anyway. Mm. So. Uh, mm. Mm. I think mm. I'd pass on these. Yeah, I mean, look, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was trying to say something nice. I don't want to sound like I'm angry all the time, but yeah. You, you right. are. I am. Can we put up another picture of Kimbo Slice? Mm-hmm. Like, it's like, starting to look like you. Definitely starting to look like you. There you go. It looked like you. Look at it. Look at the top. So no, I look like you. I'm a little lighter. I got more combo with mine. You know what I'm no, saying? I trim my beard. I don't got no split ends. I look more like you. That is you. You that was outside like cutting the grass you. for too long, that and more you, you no, came no, in looking like that. Yeah, his skin ain't as clear as mine. It was like, you missed the spot. you like, what? No, it's definitely not me. Uh, how much time we got before we get there? We got time. Uh, now, you remember what was about a year or so ago that Allison Felix, the Olympic runner, mm-hmm. uh, she left Nike mm-hmm. because she was pregnant and they didn't take care of her. But now, so, after she left, they started to pay women for maternity leave now? Well, yeah. And she, they do that after she left, though. They started that, which was whack. Well, but. she crawled so they could run. Hindsight's twenty twenty. Well, Simone Biles, gymnast Simone Biles, leaves Nike for the Gaps Athletic brand. Uh, an article written by Lauren Thomas for CNBC, Olympic gymnast Simone Biles is departing Nike to partner with the Gaps Athleta brand. At Athleta, say that five times fast, Simone is going to have her own performance wear line, which will include products for wearing to and from the gym. Uh, the brand will also give Simone a platform to be an activist for women and other female athletes. In 2019, Athleta brand landed the first sponsored athlete, Olympic track champion, Allison Felix. And like Simone, Allison had previously partnered with Nike. She left the swoosh at a time when the company was being criticized for not supporting pregnant athletes. Uh, when announcing their partnership with Allison, Gap said that their goal was to flip the sponsorship model on his head by giving athletes more support in their personal lives and by handing them creative responsibilities. <clears throat> Excuse me. Recently, Gap announced that they will soon be expanding their athletic brand into Canada. Uh, athletic brand is targeting $2 billion in annual sales by 2023. They surpassed the billion-dollar mark uh, last year with their sales up 16% from 2019. Gap's total sales for 2020 amounted to $13.8 billion. Uh, both Simone and Allison are expected to be two of the more prominent athletes at the Olympic Games in Tokyo this summer. Um, and so uh, here's here's what I'm now the crazy part is I know some people are like yeah, Simone Biles most people know her some people don't obviously it doesn't have the same uh, cachet as a Kobe Bryant uh, but still I think it's still a loss especially when you're Nike like the, let's be honest this year has not been the best as far as starting off you had the Marcus Jordan situation you had the Ann Herbert situation then you lose Kobe now you lose Simone Biles we're literally four months in and those are four different negatives <laughs> in a row <laughs> starting off the year. That's not a good, you know, fortunate for Nike, they got dope product that they don't want to give, make enough of to get to their fans, but, you know, that's neither here nor there. Point being, I think this is going to be a loss for them. And this is the thing, and I think you're starting to see, I mean, we've seen it already in a couple of years leading up to this. We've seen designers leave Nikes. We've, and so far, so good. Right, because the designers, you don't really know them. There's no real attachment to them. Except for Tinker. Well, he's still there. I'm talking about people that, like, you know, like, I forgot the three guys that left and went to Adidas and whatever. And they survived Kanye, you know, leaving. Um, Drake was talking about leaving, but then he stayed. Uh, I'm trying to think of whoever else. Jerry so Lorenzo, I mean, they survived the Kanye leaving by signing all his own boys. Jerry Lorenzo, Virgil, Don C. Yeah. So, I mean, like, you still got kind of like pieces of him, but you you let Jerry walk, you let Kobe walk. Rest in peace with Kobe Estate, and then you know this young lady, the gymnast. So I mean, 
I, but they only receive dollar signs, so they're not going to see the real impact because we're still buying their product every Saturday. Well, here's my thing, though, and this is what I, and this is why, like, we, we, we're we halfway joking when we say it, but there's a lot of parallels between them and Adidas and uh, the WWF and WCW in the mid-'90s, right? For a while, WCW was winning, and WWF got this shit straight, and then they, you know, started winning again. WWF you fans were so loyal, though. Like, even when they were losing, like, they refused to watch WCW. But not enough of them, because it was, once again, WCW was killing in the ratings. So, I mean, you can have your loyal fan base, but, I mean, if they're a small minority, it don't mean shit. All right, Sting coming from the Raptors was fucking sick. But, I mean, other than the that. NWO was sick. No, WCW fucked up, because they didn't expand on that. But my point is, you never want to give your competition a foothold like that to be beating you because you know what they might not make mistakes they may actually make good quality decisions and expand on their uh their foothold against you but that's and so not why, that's why those two brands actually the, the brands are really excelling because everybody that walked away from you worked is at adidas which is helping them flourish one of your biggest Probably your, and then probably the only reason why Under Armour is still like a float somewhat is because you let Curry walk. You know what I'm saying? The reason why Adidas is somewhat making basketball shoes is because you let Harden walk. So right, it's don't just let like, Jason and Jerry actually do well with the uh, basketball so category. Yeah, so now, it's just like yeah, they, the, here's the funny part: Nike basketball ain't is like out of all the other brands at the bottom. So. If Jerry and Jason are actually able to make something happen, now you got competition. I mean, Nike, Nike, uh, as far but as the and, basketball category, y'all went unopposed for I don't know how long, uh, mm-hmm. and so now you got competition. And I've and I said that too. I said to people that working there, I'm like, y'all are so lucky y'all don't have another Nike to go up against, right? Like Adidas kind of like even when they what was it two years ago when they had their little wave. The problem was they celebrated too much and didn't really see. They wasn't thinking long term. They were so caught up in the moment and the fact that they were back on top or whatever that they kind of celebrated too long or whatever. So they kind of let they foot off the gas and allowed y'all to kind of recover. Here's the thing: Adidas is still there. They ain't out. They ain't out of business. So you letting all these people walk, and they got all these other people and they're giving them creative control and all this other stuff. Now it remains to be seen how that's all going to play out. However. The attitude I sense from Nike is we're Nike. We're number one. And you never want to get in that position where you don't think that you've got to be worried about anything or that you don't have to, like, that you're perfect or that you don't have anything to improve on. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You should always be looking to improve. Like, I was watching Black Panther, and then he was talking about, uh, I don't know if it's a bracelet or something. He was like, it works. And shit, like, just because it works doesn't mean it can't be improved. You know, just because it's perfect doesn't mean it can't be improved on. And it just seems like Nike has generally speaking, has this arrogance about them. And I think that's going to be the downfall. Because, like, you talk to them, the reason they're willing to let people walk, because they're like, well, we're Nike. Okay, well, you know, you let other people walk, and they all go to your biggest competition. I mean, I'm pretty sure Vince McMahon was probably like, oh, yeah, okay, Hulk Hogan, like, we're WWF. Okay, like, this person, this person. Like, you lose so many people, like, what... People tune in to see those people on WWF. Now they can watch them on WCW. So now you got to create new talent in the case of, you know, in that analogy. Going back to Nike, now you got to find ways to reconnect to the to your, your fan base because as of right now, you're catering to a fan base that really don't give a shit. Like, you know, like they're hype beast and, you know, these kids or whatever. They're just buying whatever you tell them to buy. That's not, that's, that's not sustainable. At some point, they're going to grow out of it and move on to something else. And then on the flip side, you got people like me and Guru, and Dunk sometimes, where, you know, like, you're basically telling us to kind of kick rocks because, you know, we're trying to buy the shoes we grew up on, and now we got to fight through bots and all this other stuff to get the shoes. You're purposely limiting the shoes to create demand. So you're creating two sides where they're not really establishing brand loyalty. Like, yeah, you hot right now, but we can go through history but, and talk about different things that were hot at the moment, and we look back and they're no, lo- they're no longer in existence or no longer hot, so. I feel like Nike made, here's the thing, Nike made so much good things in the past. The reason that we're able to withstand Adidas run is that they had new product that we was buying. We was rebuying all the old stuff. Nike's the best George- thing that they did was innovation. 
Yeah, but Both. they haven't been innovative. So when they say we still number one, it's because you're re-releasing all your old stuff. Your whole Jordan line sells because of that. Your pennies, your Barclays, your Griffies, like your retro and LeBrons, your well, retro and Kobe. So like all that is old stuff. No one's buying into your newer product. Adidas is trying to establish itself now, like you did in the '90s. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. like that's what it. That's what it's. That's exactly to. what they're doing. That's I, what's, I, I agree that's with what that. is going to happen. So I mean, it's they really going to be in trouble when they start retroing Yeezys. And for reals, like when that's time to like down the line, that's when they're gonna really feel. That for whatever reason, though, they don't retro. They literally re-release same box, same skew, same everything. No difference, no detail, and that that upsets a lot of collectors. Or but my heads. thing is, well, when the Jordans don't come out exactly how they were, people complain about it too. That's yeah, it's definitely. So, so that's sword. that's what well, I don't so even hear a lot of collectors it. complaining too much. About. Although the lightnings, I'm hearing a lot of. Um, it's like a black versus slightly gray. Yeah, but like, that's I don't give a fuck. Exactly. But. I mean, they're always gonna v- change little things on there so that you know the difference. Like the true pe- the true collectors, the people that are really in the know, they're gonna know that the di- notice the differences. I'm interested to see if you agree with us so far. Kind of sort of okay. Uh, the winning on nostalgia, period. Yeah, but nostalgia yeah. like has. A, I mean, everything has a shelf life. You know, everything has a shelf life, and you got to create new nostalgia because guess what. These kids didn't grow up with Michael Jordan like we did. You know, so I'm happy it's going. The, the floodgates are going to open. Is it's almost like going back to the Avengers when they was beating on that shield. Yeah. And then once they finally gave in, as when they rush, it's going to be the same thing with that because with this Kobe deal kind of is weighing out, and that's all the NBA players are wearing now. So they are wearing all the PEs that Nike let them design. I wonder what they're going to switch to. Huh? I wonder what they're going to switch to. That's the thing about it. It's like, dang, like we can't even, you know. They can say, well, this shoe, you got to wear a different shoe this year. Or people's going to be holding on to the Kobe's, or they're going to find another shoe to wear. But you really haven't been designing nothing really that innovative. Well, most of them are still going to wear Nikes because a lot of them are still under Nike Yeah, contracts. under contract. Yeah. But as far as the Kobe's, just like, what am I going to, outside of the Kobe basketball shoe, what are the basketball shoe I'm going to wear? If I'm, I'm not 250, if, I'm not going to wear LeBron's because I'm big too heavy. I'm, if what other shoe you wearing KDs like he barely playing it. Anyway. No, yeah, I was gonna say <laughs> like Kyrie's like it's just you know it just it if I'm Nike up. I gotta be a little concerned. I'm not saying you gotta hit the uh, the red siren or anything. You ain't gonna pick up the red phone. I'm just saying I would be a little concerned as to how we're starting off this year, and I would you know just be keeping my ear to the ground. I wouldn't be acting as arrogant as I well, think they, they are. Acting. Ear to the ground, they wouldn't let none of this happen. Oh uh, well, that's true. I mean, you wouldn't let him walk. You wouldn't let Jared, like, come on. I'm just saying, some things can be avoided. Some things could have been avoided, and some things were Nike well always within. bounces back, though. That's the thing, though. Like, you know what it, Okay, you know what that reminds me of? Okay, remember when the Pistons were good, right? And they had this attitude, like, we could flip that switch on and off until you can't. And that's the thing. You never want to put yourself in a position where you, you tell yourself, well, I'll always flip that switch. Because it's going to come a day when you can't flip that switch. Oh, you can flip the switch, but somebody Wait, else got to switch, too. Has and his Nike day and lights are brighter. <laughs> Look at this you comment, though. Has Nike made a hot shoe in the last five years? A like, new one? A new one? Mm, Ooh. I have to say. What, what was that silhouette you just got? Uh, the cosmic utility or something? Oh, the, oh those are dope. I Look. And yeah, those are new as one. hell. That's, but I'm like. The yeah. cosmic unity. Is a dope shoe. Uh, uh, I had to say the Vapor Max Plus. That shoe uh, is was that this nice. right here? Yes. That's, it was a remnants of it. But um, that. Um, I mean, I it depends. Cause, okay, of, so like, what's it? You know what the problem with that question is? Yeah. Kyrie's have been selling. I the the that. problem with that question is, is sometimes we get so caught up in sneaker culture that we only see those shoes. And there's a lot of other shoes that exist, like the Vapor Flies. We were talking about that, like how a lot of runners love that shoe and how they uh, is giving them a competitive edge, per se. I run in them. That's what I'm saying. So, like, and that goes to the innovation of Nike, where they still innovate. It's just a lot of the innovation is going towards shoes that a lot of sneakerheads are not into. You know what I'm saying? Because they're, they're still... more performance shoes and not, nothing, not something you would necessarily wear for fashion. Like, you're not going to go to sneaker con and see people wearing vapor flies. But oh, no, I wore them, and someone was like, bro, what the hell's on your feet? Or, like, it looks like something, like, to solve a back problem or something. Yeah, like... But, here, but here's the thing, though. Like, right, right now, I'm probably in the market looking to get some more basketball shoes Come on, going back to playing basketball more often. It's like, what's really available outside of a Kyrie, KD, LeBron, and Paul George? Usually, they usually have, like... The signature line, and they had other models that were just as good. You know right. what I'm saying? I think the LeBron since the 15s have been dope. I think 
the Jordans, like, eh, that's the crazy part. Like, think about it. Like, Jordans are kind of been in. Eh. Like, the 34 was like the first Jordan I was like, I have to have. Like, this is the first dope new Jordan that I could say that I actually want outside of it. Outside of the name Jordan attached to it, these are actually a dope sneaker. Like, the 33s, probably one of the hardest shoes to put on foot. Uh, the 32s were okay. 31s was in. The 31s were, I had hooping. I got a pair of 31s. So hooping, the was, 31s were some of the most comfortable shoes, but what did that shoe a disservice was the grip. Like, I had my wide foot. It fits me perfectly. I had uh, the pillows in the back for your Achilles, full little zoom air in the, for, in the whole foot of the shoe. But it, the the grip was so terrible, I had to take them off. I was like, Christina but that's the Yamaguchi problem, though. Like, sliding everywhere. you look at all these shoes up here. Who's wearing them for actual performance? I'm talking about for this. What we talking about performance kind of. Well, no, we like people perf- wear these for performance. But I'm just saying, like, more people are buying it for the style than they are for the performance. But you still got to take care of your performance market. That's no, why I, COVID no, we agree. I, but the thing about Nike though is they used to be it used to be fifty fifty. They used to think about the performance because think about it, even when Jordans first came out, they were performance shoes at the time. Everything's athleisure now, and they they were dope. That was the thing. That was the, that was the appeal about Jordan. Not only were they great on court, but they looked good off court too. Now it seems like they're either one hundred percent focused on performance or one hundred percent focused on design, and the other half suffers. Very rarely do you get a a, a, a mix of both. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, and I think that becomes a problem. Um, because, like I said, more people are wearing shoes off the field or off the court than they are uh, wearing them for the performance reasons. And if you are, and even if you are going to wear a performance shoe, you're not going to spend two fifty. Like you're not going to wear those University Blue Fours to play basketball. You're going to find something cheaper because you know you're going to damage them. You're going to destroy them on the this court. Is, this is why them losing Kobe hurt because a lot of people was buying Kobe for the, for the performance. performance, and that took that's a huge blow yeah. to your Nike basketball area where you was at. You know. The the best thing, like, so we'll see. I mean, people who put Kyrie's and you know LeBron's, but he was the probably the most yeah performance but nah, choice. I, but I I do think that um you know like I said, Simone Miles might not have the same uh, name cachet as a Kobe or a LeBron or uh, anybody else that they could potentially lose. Uh, but I, I I think it definitely. You know, just because it ain't 10, does it, you know, you could be 10 points or one point. Like, either way, that's still a score against you. And I don't think you I don't think you want to get to the point where you're, those things start to add up before you know it. So, responding to Benjamin, uh, you are. Vapor Max Plus was the Air Max Plus was Vapor Max. So, that was a, technically a fusion. The Roshi was, but that Roshi, that That's was, over five years. Yes, yeah, over five years ago. The Vapor Max Pluses are by far, like, I mean, when we, when we went mm-hmm. and seeing the, the, the process, the design process it took them like what? I mean, because they've been working on it since the eighties. We didn't know the air that. bubble part. The upper <laughs> was know? the upper was just the Air Max Plus mixed with what yeah, they but probably the one of the more comfortable the shoes. The Vapor Max was definitely uh, innovative as far as the technology and the style. I still need to so, get a pair. I mean, that's just a continuation of it. I mean, that, the Evo is like a combination of like all different Air Max uppers, yeah. but the Vapor Max. You know. So, hey, do we got uh, we got David on the line yet? No, okay. I did tell him like eleven ten. Uh, let's get to this next one. This is kind of funny. Uh, Ocho Cinco receives backlash for telling his daughter to get a job to pay for Yeezys. Hilarious. I don't think that. Go ahead. I can't wait. No, to this, this. I, I, I find it funny, but let's see if we agree. An article written by Medusa S for HotNewHipHop.com. Chad Johnson, aka Ocho Cinco, recently left many internet users in awe. When he shared a screenshot of a conversation with his daughter where he pushed her to get a job to experience the same struggle he did. In the screenshot, she asked her father to let her know when he'll be heading to the mall again so she can grab a new pair of Yeezys. He replied by suggesting she get a job to pay for items she wants while in high school, similar to the way he had to. Uh, Letting her father know she planned to get a job right after graduating and that she had too much on her plate right now, Ocho Cinco fired back. By saying, I caught the bus to school, then went to football practice, caught the bus to McDonald's for a six-hour shift, all while ma- maintaining a 2.2 GPA, which is like a C plus or a C, he and being a star athlete. Out. I know. Why would you? That, you could have left the GPA out of that. Right, uh, just say you graduated. Look, many people on social media immediately reprimanded Ocho Cinco for the cutthroat response to his daughter. One person wrote, your kids shouldn't have to struggle the way you did. You have money now. 
Thank you. Another responded, why would you want your child to have to struggle? One person even took a shot at GPA. <laughs> I mean, I would, too. I mean, why would you throw that out there? Which equated to a C average, but Ultra Cinco laughed off the backlash, saying that he was simply trolling. Now, look, a lot of times, see, sometimes words matter, right? So most times when we say struggle, we mean earn. We mean work for it, right? So we don't really mean struggle. It's just we just, for lack of a better word, that's what we mean. So when he says struggle like he did, he means work like he did to earn things and too often we hand our kids things because we did struggle so we don't want them to suffer like we did or work like we did a lot of times but sometimes that creates a disadvantage because kids get entitled and feel like they just deserve things instead of having to earn things and i think there's something to earning something you first of all you treat it better like if you just give kids shoes you know when i started treating shoes good when i had to pay for them myself <laughs> you got to learn the value of a dollar. <laughs> when I had to pay for my own shoes, oh, yeah, best believe these shoes are getting the A-plus treatment. When people were just buying them for me, eh. Ow. So I get, I get, listen, I get it. Look, she's in high school. Nobody's telling her to get a full-time job. Chances are she got, you know, she works like four hours a day or if that, not even that, right? So there's nothing about, you know, getting a job while you're in high school, I feel like that's a rite of passage. And I don't think there's anything wrong with saying, hey, you want them shoes? Yeah, I'm Chad Ochocinco. I could get you anything I want in the world. But at the same time, I still have to instill values in you. You know what I'm saying? No matter how rich I am, I still have to teach you and develop you to be a functioning human being, an adult. So, you know, let's just say I lose everything. What you going to do then? Or You got to have these tools. Or be like, look, if you're on the honor roll, maybe I'll help you. You know, it's got to be a trade-off. I guess yeah, or like I, reward good behavior. I, I along mean, that way she earned it too. Yeah, dollar. but I mean, but telling her to get a job, you know, and everything. I, I think it's it's more about instilling values than you know people saying like you can afford. But here's my thing with <sighs> obviously these people without kids. With that situation, she's from what I he's heard from her from him that she's really good in track. So she got track meets and track practices that takes away from your time to work. If you have, I mean, if she's doing homework, things of that nature. So I could understand if he says, you know what, if you're doing this, you tr like that's going to be tough for a kid to balance that amount of extensive training, your practice, your track meets along what you want them to do well in school. Right. So I feel like if he says maybe on a Saturday or if you get a job or he said, you know what? You don't have to go somewhere, but I'm gonna make you work. So hey, I'm gonna if you want these shoes, you wanna go plant these trees in the garden, or come with be with me and be my assistant. Like doing something and earning it, man. Not getting a job, maybe a little bit, you know, iffy because of maybe her school and uh, school schedule and her track schedule. But um, I have no problem with earning. It. I had to pay for my shoes. Now the people backlashing is just like you have to understand if he's providing all of her needs. The Yeezy shoe is a necessary necessity. You know what I'm saying? So, like, if he's telling her to go work for it, that's. that's I feel like fine. a lot of people that did all the, the complaining don't have kids. Uh, and I don't think they get do. that. I mean, I, to my core, I don't want my son to feel things that I felt. You know what I'm saying? I'm pretty sure my mom felt the same way. My brother felt There's that a about balance my in that. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, you don't want. You're right. You don't want them to have to struggle. But at the same time, it's like, listen, sometimes a little struggle is good because you are, you learn to adapt. You learn to overcome. But I understand. You learn to persevere. My sister, they didn't, my mom didn't make my sister work in high school. And I made me work as soon as I came out to everybody. But there's levels to it. Like, nobody's saying that she got to go get a 40-hour 40 like 40 job at a plant somewhere. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Mean, she got to work at Hot Topic somewhere for four hours a week. Shout but out Hot Topic. Gonna, it's going to take her about a month to get them. The Yeezy ain't going to be around there. She's going to pay resale. So, I mean. Okay, it could be a case of where he'll buy it and then she got to pay him back. You know what I'm saying? Like something. Like, you know, once again, it's all about the value. Like people get. Oh, yeah. You, you know what the problem you, is? You earn them. No, I ain't sure. She has to earn them. That's why. No, no, no. I'm saying, but uh, this, this is a bigger issue with people. They get the gist of a story, or they read the headline, or even they skim the article, and they look at it surface level. They never really dive into the nuance, right? Mm -hmm. Like, they see, oh, Chad Ochocinco, famous NFL player, has plenty of money. His daughter wants this shoe. You should buy it. But you got to deep dive. You got to deep dive deeper than that. It ain't about just being able to afford the shoe. It's about, what am I teaching my daughter if I just buy everything? It's hard to unspoil something. Yeah, so... you're just creating a spoiled child. And then when that spoiled child grows up, and then... Talks down to you, then all of a sudden you talking about where her parents at. Why they ain't teach her better values? Well, he tried to, but you clowned him on Twitter or Instagram I for trying to instill those values. Said. Huh? I agree with him. I don't see anything wrong with what he said. And if anyone doesn't like it, raise your kids differently. Yeah, I'm just like, no, like, they don't teach his kid. Like, first of all, get out of this man's business. I mean, I he did he had, make it I thought he had, a, Adidas, a relationship with Adidas. 
I don't know who he got I a relationship think, with. I think he was, he was with Adidas at some point, so maybe, but, you know. Is he there yet, Adam? God damn it. I'm not in the voicemail? Uh, no, I was about to. Uh, I guess we could get into the voicemail. Let's get to the voicemail. Oh, he's there? Oh, okay. Cool. Throwing our handy daddy headphones. Do we have a headphone sponsor yet? We should. Definitely. All right, turn it sideways. See if you can use. See if you can use that one over there. There you go. Is there another one over there? Yeah. There's two over there. Oh, yeah. which one you had to plug in at? Hold on. Yeah. Oh, you trying to plug it in? Yeah. Okay, done. You have to plug it in here. Yeah. You would think we had this stuff it's together before the show, right? All right, never mind. Okay. I thought you was using this. One. You need that one. I think so. Yeah. Where'd he go? No, no, you did that. Cause I don't have it. Hold on, this. Boy, oh boy. y'all thought this wasn't live. All right, I know. That's the, mm. the perks of doing the live show. Yeah. <laughs> Technical difficulties. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, man? Y'all got me. Yep, yeah. we can hear you. Can you hear us? What's going on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hear y'all loud and clear, man. All is well. How's it going? Man, we're well, definitely living. I, I, you know what? I, I'm a big fan of you because very rarely do I go on YouTube and actually see people know what the hell they're talking about when they're talking about shoes. <laughs> or be nice That's to them. Fair. Yeah, you, you're very nice. And But no, he... <laughs> He'll cut them down, but in a in a in an intelligent way. Like I had no time, yeah. so I, I use a lot of four letter words and stuff like that. Uh, <laughs> you know, you're nicer than I am, but appreciate it. But you know, like it, very rarely do I like. I remember when I first stumbled across to like your YouTube videos, and I'm like, wow, that was he actually knows what he's talking about. And like beyond <laughs> the the specs of a shoe, like you actually know some industry things as to why. Like you talked about Kobe and why Nike doesn't care about losing Kobe. You know, financially. Now, PR-wise, I still think they're going to take a hit. But financially, it makes sense because, like you said, Nike basketball is a slowly dying category. And Facts. and Kobe was probably, as far as sales, wasn't really selling. So Nike's looking mm -hmm. at it from that standpoint like, yeah, okay, well, whatever. PR-wise, right. though, I think it's not a good look, um, especially with all the controversies they've had all this year. Um, I don't know if you agree with that or not, but. No, yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah, PR wise, it, it's still not a good look. Um, I, I saw the new Mamacita outfits. I said on, I said on, you know, record. I said, I ah, these ain't it. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, I get it. Um, I was hoping that they would, you know, figure out a way to figure this thing out, but um, apparently not. So I guess they got to do what they got to do. But yeah, PR wise, no, nah, it, it's still not a good look. Right, and I don't want to get you in too much trouble. Not you in the sneakers app. You know, you big time not so. Man, oh, get out of here! <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy seeing myself on there still, man. It's, it's wild. But no, yeah. we uh, no, yeah. So for people that don't know, uh, Nike has this new thing called uh, Grail Tales. Mm. Is that what it's yep. called? And yeah. basically, just people talking about uh, stories of behind their favorite sneakers, and you know, like what they had to do to get them, and you know, everybody has a story about their favorite shoes and whatnot. And so, I think that's actually, you know, once again, like I we clown Nike when they do something retarded and. You know, when they do something, <laughs> when they do something intelligent like that, I give it to them because yeah. that's one way to connect to the community. Um, exactly. Yeah. And so uh, I give them kudos for that. Um, and then I, I like the people that they start off with. You and I believe it was a young lady. I, I don't remember their names, but it was a young lady and another uh, young man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Diana. Um, yeah, Diana is big in sneakers. Um, she actually used to have a deal with Adidas. Uh, or she was a running ambassador for Adidas for a little while, and then she got out of that. And it's like as soon as she came out of that, it was like kind of a kind of a thing on social media. Like the very next day, she posted a bunch of Nike stuff, and um, you know she was like so she really all in on Nike. So she Rick rooted them then. Remember, yeah, Rick exactly. Was on, he was on uh, what was that Raw's War one night, and then he was on a Monday Night Nitro <laughs> the very next night. Yeah, uh, exactly, exactly. <laughs> but yeah, but she got it. She got a spot on there, and then the other guy was Wells. Uh, Wells P, um, is what he goes by on Twitter. So he's super well known in sports, and um, um, you know, his Abby is like him and Kobe. He knows a lot of athletes, a lot of people in sports and stuff. So I was kind of honored to be in their presence, man, because the two of them are very well known. So I was like, hey, when they reached out, I was like, okay, sure, you know, I'm down. So um, yeah, I, I, I was honored to be there with him. No, nah, I was gonna ask like, what the hell they ask you for? Like, I was talking about the third wheel. Um, Man, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but what was crazy? What was crazy is that a lot of people have hit me and they've been like, "Yo, I actually like your story the most." 
you know, or like your shoe. And I was like, look, I think everybody has a story and they're all dope. Um, you know, I, I did, you know, recognize that my shoe was, it was a very rare one, but you know, at the end of the day, I was like, well, shoot, man. I mean, if I'm going to, uh, you know, if I'm going to be up in here, you know, I got to act like I'm, I'm supposed to be in this role. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So yeah. I, I got to bring it. Real quick, too, I want to shout out Jazza Ray because, like, you know, she's out there, put, you know, doing God's work in the chicken community. Facts. And I, I like the fact that, like, she's also very supportive. Like, cause she's obviously been working with you, and, you know, I talk mm-hmm. to her often, and she's been on our show and whatnot. And I like the fact, like, especially as people of color, like, we got to keep that door open for the people coming behind us. It's not for enough sure. for us to walk through it. We got to make sure that people walk behind us. Uh, through that same door so i uh, just definitely want to give her her flowers uh um, triple og man yeah well that's to make it sound old jazz he said you oh he said, you, he <laughs> said, yeah, you let, he yeah, said let me not let me not age her <laughs> let me not age her let me, let me not age her but yeah she, she's really been like a mentor man and she's still out here actively working which is amazing you know what yeah. I'm saying? so she's still doing campaigns which is really dope she just got off an ebay campaign so yeah yeah she's still working um but no I, well starting off because we were kind of talking about it and we often you talked about how Nike just got somebody from Adidas, which sounds like a rarity nowadays. It seems like everybody is leaving huh. Nike to go to Adidas. Uh, right. And so we often draw parallels between the WWF and WCW in the mid '90s and Nike hmm. and Adidas. How like you know WWF for a long time was like that you know the thing in wrestling, and then Facts. all of a sudden you got WCW coming out of nowhere, snatching up their people and then making a better product for a long uh-huh. time now obviously uh-huh. they made mistakes and then wwf was able to regain his footing and come back and so uh do you see any parallels between them and nike and adidas and do you think it'll play out the same way i think that's a really interesting um i think that's a really interesting analogy to use honestly because i think you make a good point um wow yeah um i definitely do you know and the, the nike and adidas conversation has been age old at this point right um a lot a lot of people think nike's too big to fail and i don't agree with that i don't i'll never agree with that sentiment i think that we have seen so many larger entities corporations fall and tumble um i don't think anybody is invincible out here i think that nike has taken quite a few pr hits in in recent history to be honest with you i mean again i think the kobe situation was one um, I think the uh, the Hebert situation was another one, Joe Hebert and Hebert and the reselling situation and her having to quit her job, you know, what I'm saying just for the sake of, you know, them doing what they had to do. I think that the current digital push that Nike is doing is a gift and a curse right now, because yeah. a lot of mom and pop stores are being, you know, they're they're shutting their doors and they're being squeezed out of the deal um, as a result of this consumer direct push that they're doing. So, uh, you know. It like we got to see how these things flesh out. But to your point, you know, even back even back in the wrestling days of the, you know, the Bam Bam Bigelow days and all that kind of stuff. I think a lot of people looked at WWF like, hey, man, this thing is too big to fail. These wrestlers are too big to fail. But see, what happens is you start humanizing a lot of these wrestlers. They fall to scandal. Then, you know, other wrestlers go over to WCW. Now Nitro is popping. And then all of a sudden it's like, hmm, wait a minute. I, I, I liken it, honestly, to to Kanye. Right. So when Kanye left Nike and went over to Adidas, Kanye took a lot of people and a lot of business and a lot of money with him yeah. over there. And when he got that creativity, they took a hit. And I don't know if a lot of people really remember this, but for a quarter, not not for a long time, but I believe it was just a quarter. Adidas outsold Nike, you know, and it was a big news story because people were like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Adidas actually outdid Nike in footwear. It went for a long time. Nike has some things up their sleeve, but it did kind of put a chink in Nike's armor. Like, okay, you know what? Maybe, maybe we need to learn how to be on the defensive because that's something I don't think Nike has really ever been in a position to, to have to do. You know, so it really put them in that position to to um, to re-strategize and to reorganize some things. And uh, behind the scenes, you know, without saying too too much, they're st- they still continue to watch what's happening because a lot of brands have now started to come up. A lot of these small brands say, are starting to do these things. Puma now. New Balance you know? is definitely making some strides. Listen, listen, New Balance had an incredible 2020 yep. and they are shaping up to have an amazing 2021. Mm-hmm. Right. So you got to, I mean, these brands are pulling people away that were at major fashion houses, right? You, you look at uh, the, um, 
what's his name? Uh, 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 Bre- uh Brenberry, Salahe, Salahe. Sal- I don't want to Sal- get his name Salahe Benberry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so he was with uh, the Versace house, and now look at what he's doing with New Balance. New Balance you know? yeah. So brands are doing some things, and so Nike is in a new position now. And, you know, I think they've recovered well, but um, there's still work to be done for sure. Yeah, I, I was saying earlier, like, you just don't want to put yourself in a position where you're constantly trying to recover. Well, on, you know? on that topic, right. like, even even with Kanye going and bringing all the money, the business, uh, the fans, all that, it's kind of like the NWO if we're still doing the wrestling analogy. And at first yeah. it's really hot, but then you overdo it. You get the wolf pack. You get everyone on the team. It's, like, all the same colorways, too many silhouettes. You got, yeah. So how it's man, like how they many need brown to know when... can you drop? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's, like... That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> and, I, and I always tell people, I, you know, I said this on a, on a video I did one time. I said, okay. What's the difference? And maybe, maybe the dif- maybe the maybe the answer is obvious, right? But what's the difference between Kanye doing a million pairs of three fifties and Jordan brand doing a million pairs of Jordan one? And most people say, "What's well, a Jordan one? It's an iconic shoe, you know." So it's different, you know. But I don't know. Maybe it's you know, the nostalgia that's attached to you it. Wanna, you want my answer to that? Because I first that? of all, first of all, I agree with anybody. If you're looking at strictly Air Jordan one versus Yeezys, I 100 percent agree. Both sides are overdoing it with both silhouettes. However, Jordan Brand has been around for like 30 years, so you can kind of expect them to kind of lean on their laurels a little bit, you know what I'm saying? Because, sure, you know, sure. to be hot for 30 years is a long time. Whereas, Facts. you know, Yeezy has been around like relatively uh, not that long, but I mean, what, six, five, six years with Adidas at yeah, least? Yeah, about, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, like, for, so for them to like only have X amount of silhouettes and constantly rehash, like, imagine if. Back in when Jordan uh, first started, like in '85, all we kept get was Air Jordan ones. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yeah, you know what yeah. I'm saying? But they gave us twos, threes, fours, fives, and so they have so much more silhouettes now. I think now I have more issue with Jordan brand in that regard because I'm like, yo, you got more ammo. Like, at least these are the only bullets they got. You know what I'm saying? You have other yeah. bullets you could use, but you just choose not to use them for whatever reason. Well, that's, what, that's what I was going to pretty much say is that I mean they're still fresh and new, but they're but the customer base for Yeezys, they don't mind the same silhouette because they like to shoe so much to them it's comfortable. I can have to get these in numerous colorways. Same way we did with Air Force Ones. We had Air Force Ones in a whole bunch of colorways. Yeah. I mean, br- yeah. different variations of the bread and black toe Jordan Ones that he they, they give you. Jordan, Nike, Jordan brand should be a little bit better at it because, like you said, they have more ammunition. You've given us 50 Jordan colorways a year, but you still didn't give us Cherry Woods. You still didn't give us... Um, mm. The uh, the white and red uh, seventeens or the OG black, white, black and blue seventeens. Yeah. There's other shoes that you can give us. Bring back the seventeens. Yeah, yeah, but I'm but my point is, man. But no, it's uh-huh. definitely bring back the seventeens. I guess what I'm saying is like when you have an artist that's been around for a long, you expect to see a greatest hits album. You know what I'm saying? Like you expect them to be like, all right, well, I'm gonna go out here and see these songs that y'all that y'all know and love. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't really feel like putting a new album. Whereas well, as opposed to a new artist, you not expect. Like you two albums in, like I shouldn't be getting a greatest hits album already. Well, if you, you try know to make saying? a greatest hits volume one, two, and three, you need to make music now. So ten years later, you can add that on a greatest. No, nah, that's hits. true. So, that's what I'm saying. Mean, there's yeah, some middle ground right. for both brands. Yeah. So I think that's yeah. pretty much what. Now let me ask you this, because uh, I, I, I said this early in the show too, and I know when it comes to sneakers, it's subjective. Everybody's tastes are different or whatever, right? But I do think mm-hmm. we're getting to a point now where consumers. Resellers are indiscriminately buying up product, and I think consumers are indiscriminately consuming product. And right. I think it's getting to the point now where people are buying stuff, and, the, and it's almost giving the brands the idea that y'all can almost drop anything and we'll buy it. The lines by, by, of sneakerhead and reseller yeah. are slowly blurring because the whole yeah, fear of yeah. missing out. Yeah. And people say, well, if I have it in hand yeah. now, if I don't like it. I have a platform like StockX where I can sell it. It's their insurance policy. But, but you know what planted the seed for all of this? Social media. What's up? Social media has birthed all of this. It's birthed the cloud, which means I have to get shoes for an image, which birthed the overconsumption. Brands thinking, I'll hashtag this. All these people like it. I should make more. They've been misled by some things. So um, I really, and then the bots and the, you know, the, the evolution of the reseller and their resources. So I'm, I feel like that's what the groundwork for a lot of that is. And then also to Nike's credit, people feel like, I can't get this shoe, but if I can get this shoe and wait on it and then trade it for what I really want, now people have to move with it like commodity, like stocks and bonds or you know, like a real estate. Bots didn't start as a reseller tool. It used to be like a single task function so people like us could get the sneakers, and then they scaled up once all this demand inflated, Yeah, which I That's agree true. is due to social media. Mm-hmm. But it's just evolution or just feeding the beast. 
Yeah, that's true. I mean, I, I, I agree with that. And, and unfortunately, a lot of people call it a bubble. But if this is a bubble, I don't see this thing bursting anytime soon. It's only getting bigger, right? And I mean, mm -hmm. they, they anticipate that. I mean, the, the, the resale market right now, I think they said it's worth somewhere around... Billions. Four to, yeah, it's in, it's in the billions. It's in the multi-billions multi at this point. And, you know, again, I don't see it slowing down or stopping anytime soon. It's, Especially it's, it's, in a pandemic. Well, here's what I'll say. That's true, too. Here's, here's my, my response. And, you know, like, people thought the Titanic was unsinkable until it sunk. Um, here's, my, here's what I would say. I, I, two things. One, talking to people in the industry or whatever, especially Nike. One of the biggest things that's starting to also take an uptick are faking UAs, right? Because they didn't anticipate that. They would anticipate you. Uh, you create this demand. People want the product, and if they don't get it from you, they're gonna get it from somebody. Two, huh. I think what you're also starting to see to people do too are they're starting to move to other things. So like people gonna like, take so many L's, right? Before they just say, yeah. you know what, I don't care, and they move on to something else. And I see a lot more people getting more content with either not getting shoes or moving on from shoes. Like I used to think people would move from like brands to brand like nike to adidas or whatever but i'm seeing people being like okay well i wasn't gonna get these shoes so i'm gonna go get a jersey i'm gonna go get a hat i'm gonna go yeah. you know buy other things and i think when you create this environment where there's only so many shoes to go around and people are being phased out or you know they're not able to pay resale prices or they're not able to fight these bots on resale on release day i think you create a a fan base that grows more and more discontent and more and more jaded to the point where they're just like, you know what? I'm over it. They're breeding resentment. Yeah. And I think yeah. that's going to be the undoing. I think for the short term, yeah, everybody's happy. But I think long term, you're not really creating like you think about sneaker culture, right? And how it came up, right? What, what, what created that? Me, you, everybody else in the show growing up, loving these sneakers, not being able to afford it. Right. And then once no. we got older, we remember those stories, we remember those shoes, and we went back and bought those shoes, and that kind of spurred on this whole thing. And so I don't think they're I don't think they're breeding that type of consumer. You know, all the things you're describing, I felt that. You know, I was like, I've spent so much money at Nike, I've been loyal to Nike for so long, I can't get anything I want. So at some point I did resent them and I, I'm done fighting fair. So but that's I mean, exactly I mean, what happens. Well also too, you gotta look at it as yeah. a point like how can I put this? Like when it comes to the problem with Nike is there's not enough new innovation, right? So then you come in and you bring it back to old stuff, which works for the time being, but what if the people now who just got into sneakers now, what are they gonna have to lean on 10, 15 years from now? Well, there's no stories to get attached to like a penny. There's no commercials to get attached to like a Kobe, LeBron, I agree. or we Jordan. talked about the you know storytelling. That's so true. Like that, they yeah. kinda, they've kind of gotten lazy and the social media has done a lot of the marketing for Nike for minimal expense. Well, well, in you know this. Mm. Uh, the blogs operate as marketing arms. This is why when you go on a blog, there's no real conversation around shoes. Every shoe is hot because they got to sell that product. Clickbait. Yeah, every shoe is hot. Yeah, that's if, true. If you, if you hear anybody say anything about a shoe, it's either us or somebody that, you know, like in the comment section. But if you, the people that actually work, work for these blogs, every shoe is dope. You're very rarely when you hear somebody say this is trash. But also, yeah. too, I think going, going to your growing resentment comment, to me, I've heard numerous people say this, and I still can't get with it. That was like, resale is the new retail. So when a shoe comes out, they're not looking at the retail price. They say, okay, how much they're going for. They're not, like, because yeah. that's because they know that the chances out the gate are like hitting the, the mega millions. So like the resale, that Nike's literally walking people to the resellers with open arms goat stock x i'm pretty sure they send nike a christmas card every year because of the amount of limited and availability how you literally walking them right there too and then they hear some businesses to have accounts with these resellers so it's like it's already hard fighting his bot now the now the store the retail brand is already walking their shoes directly to stock x or well, goat that's making it even harder well let's walk this back a little bit because i because i mm -hmm. want him to answer or address a number of these things one you brought up direct to consumer earlier in the conversation now right. you talked about the risk and reward and i agree with you there's a lot of reward but there's a lot of risk with that and uh -huh. we talked about it on the show and i want i'm interested to hear your your take on it because like you said they're phasing out the mom and pop shops and they're even phasing out some of their retailers that they've been partnered with for a while like dsw we talked about a few weeks ago yep mm -hmm. like 
when you do that, that means less and less people are going to encounter your shoe. Because we've got to remember, sneakers are bigger than sneaker culture, right? Like, you look at the list of the top selling sneakers every year, it ain't the Yeezys and it ain't the shoes that we think of. It's a lot of the shoes that we ain't never heard of, you know? Yeah. Uh, and so like, you might see a Jordan on there and the Air Force One, but a lot of these shoes is like, w- what are these? You got to look them up. So, and I th- and those are the shoes that you'll find at like a DSW or even some of the other shoes that you'll find at the boutique. And so when you take those away, that means those people come in contact with them less. And you're almost expecting them to come to you to find these products where they'll be like, you know what, I'm just going to encounter, I'm going to buy whatever I find at the store. So I don't know, yeah. how do you feel about this direct-to-consumer thing overall? I think that that's one of the risks, you know, and, and I wonder what meetings were had behind the scenes that Nike had when they were fleshing these things out. Because running, you know, when, when I talked about Nike's 10K report for 2020, running outpaced, no pun intended, Jordan brand and Nike, well, it doubled what Nike basketball did. It outpaced what Jordan brand did. Yeah. So if you're cutting your contracts with your DSWs, your Macy's, your Dillard's, these places that that's a lot of the product that they sell. They're not selling mm-hmm. retros, right? They're yep. selling the little air, the little Nike air, whatever running shoe that the mom is buying for her kids for 49, 59 bucks, right? So, you know, if that's your bread and butter, why would you take that away? You know, unless you're trying to transition into this story to like, I don't know, right? Because they're so collab heavy right now. It's, it's hard to understand really what the play is with Nike. And that's why I'm just I'm trying to see this thing flesh out more fully because pandemic obviously was a thing. Like one thing that the pandemic did teach everybody is that consumerism doesn't slow down. It just shifts if it has to. And so what happened with consumerism is that it went digital. It went online. First of all, people were just bored in the house. A lot of people yeah. just buying stuff because they were bored. Second of all, a lot of people that were used to working in offices, they had to buy things that were more comfortable now. They really didn't have that many sweats and stuff like that. But now they were in the house every day. Can't wear, you know, these suits and stuff in the house every day. So I do think that Nike probably saw an uptick. And they did. Nike made over $12 billion fiscal year ending 2020 in sportswear alone. That right. sweats. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I don't know, like with Nike, I feel like there's this there's a balancing act that they're doing right now. And um, maybe they feel like it's not a big deal. Now, I don't know all the stats of the people that are shopping online, but I mean, QVC exists for a reason. Right. HSN Mm -hmm. has existed for umpteen years for a reason. And I'll be honest with you, a lot of that demographic is shopping on sites like that, you know, and stuff like that. So maybe Nike can tap in, you know, to that audience in some kind of a way and do this pivot that's primarily online based and still salvage that business you know so i I think that they have you know some tricks up their sleeve to be able to combat the fact that they are not you know wholesaling to these places plus at the end of the day it's higher profit margins so they also don't have to sell as much product quote unquote because they're making more money now right they're not wholesaling to anybody anymore so all that money is in house and then with the new refurbished program that they're doing with their outlet stores now on top of that that's money on money on money for Nike now. So now you can take your worn stuff, you know, and they're going to, you know, clean it up, re-clean it, and they're going to do two things with it. They're either going to make it into Nike grind and make more space hippies out of it, more money, or they're going to clean them up into one of those three categories at the outlet stores now, and they're going to push that out for the refurbish, and they're going to discount those as well. So yeah. I'm like, man, like Nike is printing money at this point, you know, so maybe they're like with everything that we have planned. It's not that big of a deal to cut them out. But see, my thing is long term. Like, yeah, right. In the now, right now. Yeah. But once again, if you breed a consumer like we just talked about, like once again, this. So sneaker culture is big, but comparatively speaking to the rest of the world is a niche. Right. And so there's still more of those moms looking for those runner shoes than there are for me and you looking for Jordans. And so when you take that customer and say, okay, now you got to come to us when they're so used to going there. Because first of all, those people that are buying those shoes are used to going to the store or whatever. They might go online. but And they some... offer free returns online. But the thing is, who? Nike. True. Well, yeah, Nike do. does, yeah. Yeah, they do. But my point is, it's so many, like when you go online, like there's so many different websites you can go to get shoes. You know, and when they come in less contact with those products, they're going to find something else. And God forbid that something else is comparable to a Nike because now they're going to be fans of that product well, I feel and I like, think that's the risk that they take 
with limiting. You know what I'm saying? When you make a smaller net, you catch smaller fish. That's yeah. the way I look at it. And so you're kind of shrinking your net, expecting the fish to come to that net. And that's not necessarily, I, I don't know. We'll see how it plays out, like you said. I just think long term, there's, I. I they still I have their powerhouse franchises like Foot, foot Locker, Foot Action Champs. Well, they're trying to get away from them too, though. They, if you talk to them, they want to get away from them eventually. So this is this is my. This is yeah, how, eventually. Yeah, this is how I look at it, right? Nike, you you let your mom and pop stores, you let the Foot Lockers, who was a very essential in your retail space for numerous years, you Nike let them establish the customer base. Now when Nike feel like, okay, I got my e-commerce to a set where I don't need this no more, they're trying to phase them out. So they use Foot Locker, the mom and pop stores, Walters, whoever else, to build up their, their customer base. And then now they want to cut the middleman and have them come to them directly. As someone who's worked in retail, working in retail for 10 plus years i feel like since the pandemic people are even more anxious to get out the house for 11 12 months all i had to do was order my shoes now i want to get out the house so when i go to the mall i want to try my shoes on if you're running you want to see how that fit is nike shoes aren't always the best in fit so you gotta make sure you know plus i gotta put an insole in it or if i got an orthotic so to me, like people are still coming in and Foot Locker and other places are still doing record numbers from people coming inside. So the pandemic has even made people more anxious to come out and be in the stores and drive it. So you're picking a time to scale away when you're getting the most traffic. Prior to, people took it for granted from going in the store. I'll just order it online. And even when you come in the store, they make us push it. If we don't got it, we can ship it to your house. So like that, even when you come yeah. in the stores, people wasn't losing out on the sale because we can order it. And see, well, that, well, that's why what you do is you, you lower your allocations mm -hmm. to those large stores, right? Because, like, you got to, like, when you think about people being hooked, you know, on a shoe and still wanting to get out the house and go into the store. And I agree with you 100 percent. People are itching to go outside at this point. And so when, when they want to go outside and they want to touch and feel and see, they're still hardwiring themselves that they got to have this shoe you know they've got to have this certain product so what you do if you're a nike at that point is you say let's start lowering the allocations that the stores get so that they sell out so that when people want that sneaker where are they going to go right because like i don't know like i mean I, I don't know how you guys feel about it right if you see a shoe that you want if there's a nike air max whatever and you really want that air max what are the chances that you're going to go like you're going to go to a store and they're going to say, man, that shoe was sold out. What are the chances that you're going to say, OK, well, let me get this this, you know, Reebok Zig Connecticut instead versus saying, OK, where can I find that Air Max? Is well, it online? Can you well, order it? That's what I was saying earlier. I think you're starting to see more and more people being like, you know what? I don't need the shoe because, some yeah, you're going to have the people if sold out at Foot Locker on, on in, in their website too. more like it's going to be sold out at Nike. Well, if I'm getting it for looks, maybe I'll say fuck it. But if I'm getting it for a function or like as a sport or a reason, mm -hmm. yeah. then whatever it takes to get it. But I mean, I think uh -huh. two things are in play too. One, as I get older, like you know, especially you know us getting older, especially if we got families, priorities change or whatnot. I'm not trying to spend five hundred dollars on the resale market for no shoe. I don't care how much I want it. And I've gotten to the point now, like last year, right? I started off saying I'm gonna get a shoe a week. That's just, just, a lot. That is a lot. Uh, and I was just kind of like, I can afford that. Yeah. I would easily afford that. I'm like, okay, cool. And then I got to the point where it's like, I don't even care. Like, as soon as I, it, it, there was a point in time where, you know, it would sell out on Sneakers Up or whatever. And, you know, you'll go to eBay or wherever the resale, you know, the cheapest resale price was. And you'll try to get it before the price go up. Now, I don't even care. I'm like, I didn't need the shoe. And I think a lot of people right. are starting to get to that point. Maybe not enough to cause a dent yet. But you don't want that number to grow. Or you don't want people to say, you know what? It was four shoes this month that I want. But since the shoe I really want, I couldn't get at retail and I got to pay resale. I'm going to skip up the next three releases. Well, I'm also, another thing too, stores are getting their shipment late. So it was like, if the sneakers app ain't doing the most justice, or I tell people, hey, you know, we don't got to try Nike. I ain't about to deal with Nike, man. They always sold out. People are using the bots, X, Y, and Z. So I've seen people miss out on Carmine 6s and buy a Carmine 6 ring right in the store. I wouldn't do it, but to each his own and i've seen it like other product has continued to set up six rings 
have been selling out like hotcakes. Air Force Ones. I'm like, why don't you go on Nike.com and order Air Force One? No, I want it right now. They go up the street to the reseller and pay the extra fifty dollars for the all white Air Force One. So while That's Nike's right. trying to limit your allocation, once again, you dog walking your consumer right to a reseller. That four fifty they paid for that Kobe, they could have bought three more Kobe's from you for the rest now, of this month. Whether well, they admit it or not, the resale market does wonders for Nike in terms of marketing. And whether they planned absolutely. it or realized it and ran with it, it's inevitable. Yeah, but, yeah, and, and that's that's sales, very yeah. true. But here's the thing, like, because yeah, I, 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 I know we're talking all, like Nike, 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 and like I, I be personally, I hate when you know the conversations go that way because there's other brands other than Nike that's out, they're doing their things. We talked about New Balance; they they killing it right now. And I think uh -huh. what's cool about them, especially them and Puma, is they're like, you know what, we're gonna focus on what we can focus on. We're gonna focus on what makes us great. You know what I'm saying? We're not going to try to come out here and try to, like, out Nike Nike, but you know what I'm saying? Like, we're not going to try to do that. And I even see Adidas starting to do that. Like, okay, but, we're going to focus but, on us. But all those brands know Nike's biggest weakness is lifestyle. Once they lost Kanye, it was open It was open, It was was open. open season on their lifestyle. I, mean, I was trying to Absolutely. get the focus away from Nike, but thank you for that. <laughs> I, mean, no, but I, that's, I mean, going back to Adidas, <laughs> that's everybody, New Balance, Adidas, everybody attacks is that lifestyle part. But I mean, what I'm saying, though, like, new, I mean, you're right. Like, it is the lifestyle thing because people are wearing sneakers more as a lifestyle than performance. Like, that's to say that people's not doing it, but... Um, but, like, I like what I see from New Balance. And, you know, even they're trying to compete in the basketball category is, like, you know, they're not trying to... Like, it's almost like they know there's not going to ever be this behemoth. But they're like, you know what? As long as we're decent, as long as we're good, as long as we're giving people options, you know. And a lot of times these brands, like, they have better quality and they're cheaper. That's the thing that I think goes unnoticed by a lot of hype beasts, let you me, know. Let me ask you this. If Nike was way better at lifestyle than what they were, do you think a, a New Balance would still get the same amount of attention? They're not getting attention now. Like the New Balance is made in no. U.S., I think, as well. Yeah, I don't think they're getting enough attention. That's the point. I'm like, just saying, yeah, even even with Nike, I'm just saying, like, if if Nike was on that top of their game with the lifestyle, do you think New Balance would even get some looks that way from a normal consumer? From they're collaborating. No, because yeah. that's that's my point. If Nike was doing a better job, they definitely wouldn't because they're not getting attention now. I and agree. Nike's giving them every reason to like give them attention. So. I think the problem is too, like you know, what I'm saying, like just because Thriller is a hot album doesn't mean there aren't other artists that you can listen to. You think, know what I'm saying? I think the hype beats have become the poster child for the life. They become the consumer. target demographic. And they're I the think, loudest yeah. in the room. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The and loudest. I think, and I think for a lot of it's brands, like, I think a lot of brands, and I'm like once again, I want to maneuver away from Nike, but I think the problem with a lot of brands is that they're still holding on to this old style of thinking as far as marketing. Remember, like the target demographic was what 15 to 35 or something like that. Mm -hmm. And right. That used to be true because what would happen once you got to 35, you would age out. What you're seeing now yeah. is that's not happening. We're continuing on. Like I'm 37, you know, like and I'm still buying sneakers like I was when I was 20. You know, like obviously I'm not. Uh, obviously I got priorities and I got you're responsibilities. Not size 13. That either. I was in a 15 back then anyway. But, <laughs> so, yeah, so it still stands. But the point is, and I think so, I think that has to catch up with the uh, with the industry. I should say, like, you know, like y'all well, still got to cater to us as well. Like we, we didn't stop buying sneakers. Well, who's the target demo, right? And, and that's what you got to look at from a, from a brand perspective for at any brand, right? Who's your target demo? You know, your target demo these days, to your point, it may still be the 15 to 35. So if we look, I'm 34, right? I might be aging out now. Granted, I'm on YouTube and things like that. So my line of work kind of requires me to continue acquiring product, which I absolutely love because I love the product that I'm still getting in. But generally, like you said, you know, people are going to buy. Eh, I'm going to get one pair. Mm, I think I'm going to skip this month. I got a mortgage. I got this going on. The kids got ballet and baseball, things like that. So, you know, they're skipping out. Meanwhile, you got these other kids out here that are running up credit cards and they're buying you know, 50 clips of, you know, whatever sneaker just came out. Which clips. one are you catering to more? But I, feel like I mean, but, but I mean, yeah, the kid, here's the funny part, though. Those, where those kids getting the money from? They parents. You know what I'm saying? Like, so we're still. Or, the, or their what, businesses as resellers. Mm -hmm. Look, the, I think. But the, how, many, how many, okay, how many businesses are really operating right now? I'm not just, you know what I'm saying? Like, as, like, I think the most, and this is why I, I guess my point of view is, like, it's the people with the money, right? And most of the people with the money have jobs. Like, yes, the kids, I mean, we've seen it. We go to Secret Con, and I've seen a kid ask a parent for $700 like it was nothing. I'm like, what? Yeah. I remember Thanks. as a kid, like, 150 was like, you know, you got to. <laughs> that was crazy. You got to rake the leaves off of everybody's house 
on the block. You know what I'm but saying? Yo, on that point, like you have to work for it. Like you, you gotta rake the leaves to to do the money to get the money to spend what you want. The state that the industry is in is breeding resellers like you said older people we've got mortgages to pay well i could just get this jordan and have supplemental income and people are starting to to blur the lines of sneakerhead and reseller and i always do this venn diagram thing and it's the middle is expanding on both ends but i feel like also too as when you're a brand like you have to dig deeper now like even i hate to mention it sees nike like you can <laughs> cater to the hype beast that's 18 to 35 or whatever the seven inside that 18 to 35 that's but you also can cater to the nike basketball people i love my pennies and my gary paytons and my charles barkley's like you can still walk and chew a bubble gum something that act like they have to be like well, well if i give you all these pennies then i can't put on no travis scott it's like you can do both you can take care of everybody you know what i'm saying that's why people love drake album because he rap on it he sing on it he harmonize on it like you can still do that with your brand you don't have to leave nobody unturned so i mean that's my take on it. But, but I, one of the things I really wanted to... I don't know if you want to address that, but... Um. I mean, I, I guess the only thing that I would say to that is, you know, I think that the brands are trying to tell some stories. They're trying, but I'll be honest with you, they just don't have the machine behind them and they don't have the eyes on them. And so they're going to... I mean, there's some... Listen, New Balance did an incredible Black History Month collection uh, for 2021, and it really flew under the radar. I, I have some of the, I got the shoes, and I, I got the 574s from that collection, and it was great. They had some internal people that, that told some great stories, and they came out with a great product, but nobody really heard about it, you know? And so I think, you know, money determines visibility, which determines revenue a lot of times. And so, you know, I think some people just feel priced out. But my bad, Steve, you can go ahead. Oh, no, no, I was going to say, because um, storytelling is something I want to get to, but like, uh, one of the things I wanted to like bring up was like I remember, man, like uh, it was a couple of years ago, Aces and Sacconi in particular, mm-hmm. I thought were really killing it, right? Because they were doing a lot of uh, lifestyle shoes that were like really catching the attention of the sneaker community, and they were doing some dope collabs. And I, um, but I think it's an interesting thing because you know we talked about collaborations before, how collaborations operate like sales do in a, a grocery store, right? They're meant to get your attention, and once they brand has your attention, they can cap, they can keep it with all their other product, right? Just like a sale, they get you to the store, and while you're at the store, you buy other things that you might think about. Oh yeah, I need eggs. Oh yeah, I need you know so whatever, right? Um, and so I think that's where they lack, uh, like the innovation, like especially with like a Sacconi, right? Like, okay, so you got all these dope things, you got all these collaborations, but they didn't continue to innovate beyond that. And I think that's where the attention went uh-huh. as far as like a Sacconi. Um, Asics, I think, is another. And so, like, I'm hoping, and I don't know if you feel the same way, I'm hoping that they are working on some things as far as innovation wise, uh, as well as continuing to do with the lifestyle shows. Because I was happy, like, I, I feel like when you have competition, Right, that's great for us as the consumer, because now we have options. Right, like I, I like Nike. I'm a big fan of Nike. I'm a big fan of Jordan Brand. Grew up on both, but mm-hmm. I, I'm a sneaker head. I'm not a Nike head. So like being You're able to, head? right, right. So I mean, <laughs> but, but, listen, <laughs> listen, I'm where, a sneaker kind of sore, man. I hate where, wearing a size wear. 15 kind of limits my options, <laughs> but. You know what I'm saying? But, like, but at the same time, like, I was a big fan of Asics. It's like, yo, like, I love the stuff they was doing. And a lot of times, like I said, a lot of times the quality was on par, if not better, than Nike. And the price was a lot cheaper. You can get a pair of, gel, a like, fact. threes for, like, what, 130 <laughs> but, you know? Here's another, yeah. guru, another guru secret. eBay has their own. I mean, Asics has their own official eBay page. And sometimes mm-hmm. they run outlet prices. I got my Gel Diablo. Uh, so Asics show. for yes. 46 for 29 for 40 I'm glad you brought that up. I'm glad he brought that up. I got I got in on that sale and I got a pair of gel lights for twenty dollars free shipping. I promise. Yeah, I got. Hey, Adam, we might run a little over. Is that okay? Okay. Because uh, so, I, I man, I've been down. I had this dude on the show for a minute, so like I got so many things I want to address. Uh, speaking of eBay, I've said this. I, you know, I know they're trying to compete with the stock X's and the goats of the world, right? Like as far right. as. But here's my thing, and I, I tell you all the time, like, look, when you're competing against something, right, like a stock X. The 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 impulse is to mimic what they're doing or find some way to, you know, basically to mimic what they're doing. Okay, they're authenticating. We got to authenticate, too. But I think sometimes y- you don't necessarily have to do that. You could do something differently, right? So, like, if they feel the need to authenticate, like, first of all, they had, 
let's be honest. I think the cat's out the bag. SneakerCon is working with them doing authenticating, right? And that's right. why you're having such a backup as far as wait times for the authentication because they got, like, what, two people authenticating a million pairs of shoes every day? <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah. so They're trying so, to hire, but, yeah. Yeah, they trying. They ain't trying hard enough. But look, the point is, Man, this guy. I, I've been telling them, I've been telling them, like, look, make it optional because people that buy online, I know me, and I know I ain't the only one. I hate waiting. For a shoe, I'm not paying three hundred dollars to wait a month for something I paid. Th- you know what I'm saying? So it's like, so my yeah. idea was, my idea was, make it optional. Some of us don't need it. Some of us don't need. Like if a seller is putting up enough pictures for me to be comfortable enough to purchase this shoe, and they have a track record that shows that they're reputable, all right, let me opt out of this authentication. Like still have it for the people mm-hmm. that need it. Because I just bought a pair of Converse weapons. I guarantee you nobody's making fake Converse weapons for size 15 people right now because yeah. that's not, that, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's not a hot shoe. Like, that's make true. it optional so that people like me can look at a shoe, say, you know what? I feel comfortable buying this. I don't feel like waiting for you to authenticate it. Give me my shoe now. We can opt out of it. We take on the liability. So, like, if every, you know, if this shoe ain't, you know, if it's, you know, if it's fake or something that's different. If You're it's, like, if it's but used, you got to keep it. Yeah, yeah like, that, like that would be the only way is that no matter what happens, you got, I gotta, I gotta, man, when you, when you say eBay, I was like, uh oh, because eBay, eBay is the label that pays me. So I gotta choose my words. A you little. heard it here first. Hey, hey, you heard it here first on the show. But, but no, <laughs> but, um, shout but out what eBay. I will, sh- shout, big shout out eBay. Big shout out eBay. Um, but Get it together, uh, eBay. Say, They've been doing it the longest, in all fairness. Get it together. They, they, they were the original. They were the original whatever. Because here's the deal. You could always look at historical sales on an eBay, eBay. Yeah. right, to see what a sneaker was selling for. That's and how Camp was started. Get, yeah. That's how Camp, <laughs> exactly. That's how Camp was started. StockX's predecessor, right? So yeah. there you go. You know, so so right there, we've had the ability. It's just now StockX has has done it in a way that's like NASDAQ, where, you know, if you're into that type of thing, then you can have that type of thing. But what I will say is that I agree. I, I do agree that the way somebody on Twitter just told me the other day that he was still waiting on a sneaker. It had been over a month and he was still waiting to get the shoe. He paid like five hundred dollars for the shoe. So I, I agree. Now, what I will also say <clears throat> Is that if they put a disclaimer in there um, that no matter what happens with this sneaker, you agree to be liable. Well, first of all, here's the deal. If I, I, So eBay eBay is becoming its own payment processor. I don't know if that's like yeah, new news PayPal. or not, but I think y'all probably already know that. I'm not a yeah. fan right? of that, so, and I preferred PayPal. Agree. Same. Same. Um, I, I still use PayPal, and I always use PayPal. And so now that they're becoming their own payment processor, they're trying to protect that money right they're they're not trying to get cases and scamming and all this other type that's happening so they probably feel like okay this is the best way to do it you know now granted every sneaker listing doesn't have the authentication guarantee on it i think there's still there's still some type of threshold or requirement that you have to have in order to have that i just brought some converse weapons I'm an eBay advocate. There were some Jordans that didn't have authentication, but there was another hundred dollars shoe that had it. So to me, like I've ordered all that. The longest shoe ever took for me was two weeks. The shoes I got on came in nine days. So it's like to me, I don't, I understand it. But also, eBay was the where the place where the most fakes were sold. So I understand them getting the authentication process because the amount, amount of cases that they had where shoes were fake and they were going back and forth with the seller. He said they're not. The buyer saying that they are. So so that's why, why you get people to opt out. Option. I mean, you heard of people putting like rocks on the box. Box of shoes and shipping it, and yeah, if you so, sign that waiver yeah, and give away yeah, your rights, yeah. you, what are you going to do? No, as I'm saying, like everybody's going to be serving rocks. No, no, you know, like people don't read the description or that's what I'm saying. Like, what if someone says I'm saying, listen, make them liable. A picture of a shoe. Make them liable. Make them liable. Like as far as the authentication process, like look, if it ends up being a fake, that's on you because we offered you this authentication process. Now, if they come in a, bo- if they send you a box of rocks, that's something totally different. Put that in the fine print. Let's not act like they don't have. Paragraphs. They're not reading the fine print. What Nobody's if you say reading you're bidding fine- on a listen, picture listen, of listen, the listen, shoe? Listen, 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 listen. Nobody's reading yep. the fine print. Let's not act like they don't have a long ass disclaimer already on the website. Add another f- couple paragraphs to give people an opt out option. Ain't gonna kill nobody because they're not gonna read it anyway. They ain't reading it now. So what's the difference? I'm just saying for people like me who do read the fine print, who are trying not to wait four months or I'm not four months, but that's probably 
I, I just bought a pair of shoes. That's probably going to be the next wait time, especially now that I'm talking shit about them. I mean, but, your shoes got coming to freight, though. So, I mean, you know, it's not uh, normal. You got jokes. You, you can we put, another, can, can we put a Kimbo Slice picture nah. real quick? Look, the <laughs> point is, point is, don't do it. Don't I, do it. Think, I think don't there's a way. Don't do it, Drake. Don't do it. I, I think there's a way to do it. Oh, I think, <laughs> don't do it. I, I think there's a way to do it. I think there's a way to do it that both sides can be happy. Right, like I think that's a starting off point. Like you know, give, make it optional, and then how do you make it optional? That's for them to do because they get paid to think of those things. I'm just, yep. I gave them that gym for free. But uh, I don't think you would have that same sentiment if your shoe came in ten days. I still would. I do not like waiting. <laughs> this is why I don't want to second. Here's the funny part. Here's, here's the funny part. You know why I don't? Here's the thing. I don't shop on StockX or Go. You know why? Because I don't want to wait. I was going. Wait, eBay was my go-to. It's eBay, not bad being in Detroit. Though. eBay was my go-to turnover. when I would buy shoes because I just had to wait for the shipping. You know what I'm saying? And then when they started this whole authenticating thing, it's like, okay, now where do I go now? But now, what if happen. eBay offered this? What if what if eBay offered what Goat offers, which is pre-authenticated sneakers at a higher price? Would you buy into that? Because Goat not... has an instant option for a little higher money, and you can get it in a day. Have you seen what about the that? options? They like two hundred dollars over the the price. I'm yeah, man. I mean, I this price that's because you're using Fight Club that. inventory. Listen, I ain't saying it's two hundred. I ain't right. saying it's worth two hundred dollars either. I mean, bro, you gonna have to wait, bro. It's, it, plus a pandemic. No, nah, you should not have to wait. No, nah, nobody. Have to, you know what's I'm funny not about, about that? Wait two months. I'm not trying to ask somebody. You gonna have to wait. See, nobody. I ain't trying to wait for shit. You know what's funny? I bought. You know how many shoes I bought? Grown ass man, no patience. Hold on. You know how many shoes? You know how many shoes I bought after I bought those Converse weapons? I got at least like six shoes that I bought after because that. And I got all oh, six. That's more than one a week. Yeah. I know it was. I, I was full of myself. I have more than, I, I got all six shoes. I got all six shoes before I got that pair. And I'm like, ain't no that fucking way. That was a one-off, though. See, that was a ain't, one-off, Ain't no bro. one-off. I'm it not is, no. This is, I've, Once I've again, this is why I don't got a stock X or go because I'm not trying to. Listen, I don't need somebody to justify my purchase. I don't need nobody to tell me. But hey, you're you the better. only person out of a million people that so, don't need it. So give me the option. Okay, make it special for me then. Make the Caesar rule. It's easy to own. That's what you basically want to say. Do something in my account. Listen. It's only clause. Yes. Thank you. That's what he wants, man. He wants an accommodation. Listen. Don't act like you got special accounts out there. Do something to my account to where you know what that sees. Oh no, just That's the right most to influencer thing yeah. I've heard this week. I don't give a shit. <laughs> hey, y'all have my account. Listen, do something. With I'm at my wits end. They look, everybody else get what they want. It's time for me to get what I want. <laughs> eBay's not you, innovating. You like the they're way. playing That's catch all up. It is. <laughs> you get what I'm saying though? Like they're going to learn That's by true. trial and error and from their mistake. And like, yeah, you make some valid points, but like they've been in the game the longest. They're switching to their own payment processor, and they do got to protect themselves. <laughs> That's facts. That's well, right. And to your point, right, they're not innovating. They are trying to play catch up. And it's going to be hard because, when, first of all, I'm going to be honest with y'all. When I saw this sneaker con was their authenticator, I was like, what? Because I've been to a lot <laughs> of sneaker cons before that I've seen a lot of bullshit get through. So I was like, uh, I don't know if I want these people exactly. authenticating my shoes all the time. But whatever, you know, so... Exactly. We'll that's, what, that's what I'm saying. I don't want Mr. Magoo guarding my house. Like he can't even see. <laughs> but people say that people had the same issues at Gold and Stockings before, some more than others. But uh That's true. So I that's mean true. you can't Travis run around because it's still human, it's still human error. Hey, you know speaking of secret kind, we, we we still off a dollar, so uh, exactly. You dogging people and then man, I'm sees a dog somebody really... shooting their house. Okay. You know, no, somebody. listen, I, like I keep it real. <laughs> no, nah, I real talk, I keep it real. I keep that same energy so people know what to expect. That's facts, though. No, because I used to live in Dallas. Like, me and Steve were talking about this. And, yeah, I, I used to live in Dallas. I haven't been back since I moved away. So I'd love to get back, man. I'm trying to trying to see what this vaccine is talking about, though. I'm going to try to make me an appointment this week and see if they're going to let me um go ahead and get up in there, man, and make this thing happen. Man, I don't like COVID, man. You know, it's still a thing. No, just here. get you like just well, get you a Supreme here. Hazmat suit. If you don't get Johnson & Johnson, you won't make it to the Dallas one anyways. <laughs> Jesus. Damn, that's Johnson, a good Johnson, point. You gotta wait. What are you, you talking gotta, about? No, I'm saying wait it's like a two 10... part with a two week in between and then a two yeah, week. Till. So I'm shit, saying if man. it's May 23rd, he won't make it if this oh, concerns yeah, the vaccine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah they make you wait a couple weeks between and the Dallas shots. Dallas is very uh, open. I don't give a fuck if for lack of better Dallas words. Is very open. You know, see, there's no six yeah, feet. See, there's no mask. Yeah, there's no mask or anything. All right, see, look, man, look, we gonna we gonna meet up in Cleveland. For sneaker con, because uh, what? Uh, you must not have heard my my take on Cleveland. Man, no, you can't dog because Cleveland. Out of the most shows we did live, they showed us the most love. The most people came up. No, to that's our table. listen. They listen. Cleveland's dope. Yeah. Cleveland, we could no, drive to Cleveland. Cleveland is dope if you stay inside a sneaker con for those six hours. It's outside of those six hours that I'm talking well, about. You can't it ain't hold shit to do. For the, for it the ain't rest. shit to do in Cleveland. I mean, except we, from, we live in Detroit. Ain't much to do here. Exactly. That's why I was like, I might as well not leave. Yeah. I might as well stay but in Detroit. But you don't mind living here, though. We got some after I was born and raised here. Yeah, but yeah. you don't have to stay here. 
I don't have to stay here. I'm supposed to uproot myself. I don't yeah. have to go to Cleveland. I have a family do. here. <laughs> hey, man, listen. I live in Huntsville, Alabama. I don't give a fuck where I go. It's better yeah. than here. So well, trust me. Detroit, go to Cleveland. You been to Cleveland? Cleveland. Cleveland's not you been bad. Cleveland. Uh, I've been not to, Cle- not to Cleveland Metro. I've been to, like, Canal Winchester, like, out right outside of, like, that area. Columbia, you, like Columbus, have you seen somewhere. a new Mortal Kombat movie? Yes. It's like other world. It's no, just it's like not. he's it's just like <laughs> he's terrible. He's terrible. <laughs> we had more to do in Cleveland than we did in Portland. No, the, no, we, we did. What, 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 what we do in Portland outside the Nike stuff? What did we do? We didn't have a chance to do anything else. They had us running around the whole time. No, what did we, I'm saying? What was there else to do to Google? We went out to eat and what else? It was nothing. We, we didn't have a chance to do anything. They literally had us working the entire time we was but there. But no, that one day we, that we didn't one day have a we chance to go sightseeing. That Saturday when we left the arena, we got off early and we still. We was there. tired. And we it went, was raining we the whole time. He talked, the the one had, day we had off, we went I back was, home and went to sleep. He talked about somebody who don't like to wait. This dude ain't want to wait thirty minutes at our house, so we had to go to Popeyes. <laughs> to, <laughs> nobody wanted to wait. No, <laughs> nobody <laughs> wanted to wait. He acted like I was the only person that wanted to wait. Nah, cause you was nah, you was like, I don't want to wait. Which means it was only two, it's like see. And, 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 and look, check this out. It was an empty ass restaurant that that. But too, it was, so only, it was like, why are we he, waiting? But he only we the only one there. But what is the wait for? But it's only three servers working, bro. They only have. They're not working. Minutes. Nobody was there. Oh, what are they working for? It's gonna be worse now. <laughs> Exactly. See, she's, she's a major influencer, man. Did y'all see? If y'all can pull up that clip, did y'all see the clip of Adam Sandler at IHOP, and a woman didn't know that it was him, and was mm. like, "Oh, you gotta wait," and they left, like him and his whole family left. Mm. See, he's like, "You want that level? You want Adam Sandler level?" Yeah, man. Man. Right over Shout there. out Sandman. Don't I feed into that bullshit. <laughs> Don't get into that bullshit, man. You see, you see his Yo, emotion, man. He his time is limited, and this is irrelevant. We're talking about IHOP. That's Guru. <laughs> Guru bringing up IHOP. Like, I forgot about IHOP. No, I'm man. talking about him not lying. Wait, that's a history. Uh, man, goes to listen, man. I ain't, got, <laughs> I ain't got time to waste waiting on people to make me some pancakes. Look, point being. You sound like 50 Cent. I ain't point get time to wait. <laughs> Go ahead, man. No, where is those Kimbo Slice pictures? <laughs> listen. Duh, it looks like you. What the fuck was that? I, that I, I, that I red horn <laughs> outfit you got on. I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> the steak and egg cheese. Go ahead, man. Go ahead. We're we, we doing an interview. We got us in all the No, okay. So real quick, real quick. I wanted to ask you, though, because I know, you know, I know you plugged in. You know, you said you work on eBay, and I know other things, too. But mm. um, two-part two, two question. What still surprises you when you look at the sneaker community as it stands right now? Mm. Wow. Um, you know, I, I think that the thing that bothers me is, is, is the belly aching that still continues to happen with grown ass people when they don't get a shoe. Like people are really, really mad. Like, I mean, like it's affecting people's mental, like Throwing that they salt. don't get a get a sit shot and it's may you know may mental health awareness month right so it, it like i always have felt like even in my world which revolves so much around sneakers and not only that but keeping up with what's hot and what's new even with that it's like if i take an l on a shoe it's like okay you know and then we move on and but there was a tweet that i saw i forget who put it up there but it said something like the resale industry as a whole was built on fomo which is crazy when you think about that. But there's some truth to, to that. There, there, there's really some truth to that. You know, it's like billion, a, a multi-billion dollar industry was built on pure FOMO. Like that says that something in the matrix might be broken when it comes to. But but here's the deal, though. And, and I guess this is kind of where I wrestle with myself. Is it really broken or is Nike really executing really well on what they want to do? I hate to bring Nike back up. But are they are they really doing what they meant to do? Because market has demand creation budget of hundred, X hundred million dollars that is is you know was birthed to create FOMO. You right. feel me? So like that's working. The plan's working, but it's having a negative effect on people. And so I see that you know I'd, I'd say really plugged in on Twitter and week after week after week. I'm like this can't be healthy for y'all. Like I try to tell people take a take a fucking break. You know what I'm saying? Like, from shoes, you're not missing anything. I promise you, like, go outside, get some fresh air, get some sunshine, you know? So if there's anything that still surprises me, it's like people are really mad about not getting a shoe. It's crazy. Yeah, I mean... uh, Nike's uh, breeding resentment, which is just all comes full circle. I feel like a lot of that comes from not so much not getting the shoe, it's about how did I miss out on that shoe. 
So like I'm I met the my criteria. Theme. Yeah. So that, that goes both ways though. When people do get a shoe, you'll see him on Twitter thanking God, and it's like that's not he had nothing to do with this, you know. <laughs> that's just so man, people are just too, But yeah. like, it's it's cool to be passionate, but sometimes people are just too in their feelings. I think you you would agree with it's that. A, yeah, that's what happens yeah, when you have somebody. There's a hobby, it's a, you know. To, to these brands, I put a lot of these consumers, not me, in emotional and abusive relationship. Codependent. Yeah, so that's agree. what that. That's Code what that has. So imagine how they felt when they found out the reason they were missing out on these shoes was directly involved with the Aaron Herbert and Joe Herbert. And then he did a he did a YouTube video too. He did a walk through the whole facility. I said, oh, you you he did. you was hot. He did. He was hot. I feel like Frank Lucas. We said, don't keep no dope on the money where you at. He exactly did. Did not do that. Yeah. <laughs> so the second part of that question is, what still surprises you about the sneaker industry? Mm. Um, I think what still surprises me is the struggle with, uh, with innovation, you know, and, and, and what's crazy about that is that there's been this mass exodus at brands lately. Um, if you guys, yeah. you know, if y'all have noticed, you know, a lot of people have been quitting working at big brands. Uh, especially designers, you know, and colorists and things of that nature. So brands have been really grabbing at new people, you know, Kirby coming in and all these new people that have been coming into these brands, you know, Jerry going over to Adidas to revitalize basketball. So it's like there's been this this push and pull um, of people who honestly have designed some of the most incredible things I've ever seen, um, you know, and I can I can tell that the brands have really been struggling with what's next. You know, like uh, with jo I, I'm, I'm gonna keep it. I'm gonna keep it a buck. Jordan Brand, in my opinion, is struggling right now when it comes to what's next. Like I feel like they've been really grasping at things that haven't worked. They've been trying to lean into more lifestyle. The MA2, I think, was a step in the right direction, but it was a Frankenstein of a bunch of models that I think was some bullshit. Yeah. Um, the Delta, I think, was nonsense. And, you know, mm -hmm. the, the Jordan Max, that Jordan Max monstrosity looked like a Flight 45 that nobody ever bought. Now, the MA2, it's a, it's a nice looking shoe. I got a pair. It's a good shoe. I think it has potential. But <clears throat> I think that, you know, these brands are, have really been having a tough time with, you know, how do we get away from retro, 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 you know, and they're digging into their sample bag now which we'll see because the jury seems to be out. So they got to start slapping more collaborations on that. Travis Scott and Fragment, a triple collaboration on They're one dependent on, on collabs right now. Ooh, it's bad, yeah. man. Here's, it's, it's here's, rough. The, here's the funny thing about the Jordan thing, though. Like, you saw what they do. They are a retro brand. As, as much as they don't want to hear that, they mm. are a retro brand. That, they need mm. to get away from that because at the end of the day, ain't nobody, listen, I like Zion Williamson. Nobody's really checking for his shoe. Facts. Outside of a Jordan retro, no, like, real talk. Like, if they stop dropping retros and focus just on performance and new shoes, th they wouldn't be a brand no more. They, they bread and butter are retros, yeah. and they need to accept that. But it, I feel like yeah. they should have slid in the retros with newer models, like at the same simultaneously. You know what I'm saying? But they did. They mattered. fell back. They I mean. Mattered. It, it doesn't matter to people like us, but people who still like they. Made, it don't matter to nobody else. Who else behind it? I'm, I mean, you have to be. If it's introduced to it right, people at least give it a chance. In that brand, not everybody that doesn't apply for everybody else because Nike and Jordan have a. Cash at the end of the way. day, you still got to make good product, and that's his point. Like, that's what I'm saying. If they the product has been product, whack, the same you know what I'm saying? So. Like it, outside of, because it's like they don't know what to do. Like the only thing, the only thing they know to do is make different colorways of the retros. That's all they know because they know that works. Yeah. You know, yeah, they, that that that's been their bread and butter. And now they're they just they're running out of ideas, even with the retro. So now they're dipping into the samples, and they're so like the the Shadow Two Point that are coming sample, um, the High Top um, uh, Travis Fragment collaboration, based on a sample. It's the sample Royal Blue. You know, it's like now they're starting to dip into that bag. You see more PE ish looking sneakers that are coming out. The UNCs that just dropped the fours. You know, which I think I think that shoe was. <clears throat> Oh my goodness! I just did a video on that one as well, and, and that that tag on that shoe. I don't know whose idea that was, who greenlit that thing, but what? it looked crazy to me. Ooh. But um, oh, resale just went down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, resale just went down on that one. But yeah, I mean, I just you know they need. I, I don't know who they have in house that's working on the future at some of these brands, but I'm going to tell you that I think where this thing is headed next 
as the market continues to saturate with certain, you know, models and colorways and stuff, that's a real, like um, it was said earlier, right? Lifestyle, they're getting killed in lifestyle. As lifestyle continues to blossom, that's going to be where a lot of other brands are going to make a lot of money because, man, the, the big brands, like you said, I mean, that's why I said earlier, I they're think, not too big to, to tumble. I think two things what they need to do. One, do like Kobe did and do like a uh, incorporate more new performance uh, technology in the shoes, like the Pro Tro. You know how Kobe took the old models and put the, they called them the Pro Tros? I think they need yeah. to do that. Two, mm. I think, and we talked about this, we've been talking about this at nauseum, storytelling, storytelling, storytelling. That is the basis of any good design. And I think once they get back to quality storytelling, you'll see uh, better designs, you'll see better colorways, you'll see better execution. Mm -hmm. And we talked about this before. Like, you know, you look at the different collections, like the Black History Month collection, which they stopped doing because they did such a shit job on it for the last 15 years. But point being, like, you do something like, and I think this will also ingratiate themselves with the sneaker community again because I think there's some distance. Like you say, you got the Ann Herbert situation, you got the Marcus Jordan situation earlier. You got things that have kind of created some distance between them and the community. But you know how they do like the Dornbreaker collection? How they allow people to tell yep. their stories, design shoes. Uh -huh. I think if you used to do something like that, they did that with the Air Max collection a few years ago. They allowed some people in New York to design some Air Maxes and tell uh -huh. those, you know, and tell whatever story they wanted to tell through shoes. And that was pretty dope. I ain't like every yeah. shoe, but it was pretty dope. And I think that's one way to connect with the community, ingratiate, your, ingratiate yourself with the community, and add some longevity to a brand that's struggling to come up with ideas. I like it. I like it. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's, there's room. There's room. To grow there, but <clears throat> I just um, they think they need I just, celebrity. I really want them to get away. They think they need Say celebrity. They think they need celebrity. Yeah, like, uh, man, I'm about to let the cat out the bag. It's near the end of the show, but oh, man. case in, I'm, I'm uh, about to drop some. I'm about to drop uh, some insider knowledge. Uh, Here's what happened. So, <laughs> Black History Black History Month collection. That's something I've been like harping on for the longest. Right? Had a few meetings with uh, Nike concerning that. Right, came up with a whole uh, pitch and everything. We had a series of meetings. It kept getting moved up the ladder, up the ladder, up the ladder. Finally, we get in front of one black man, a black man. So my whole premise was use black history to tell black stories. Quit, get away from the kente cloth. Get away from the tribal print. We black Please. history is bigger than that, right? Yeah. Let's actually tell black stories because. Black history is bountiful. You'll never run out of ideas if you focus on that, right? So being a black man from Detroit. Guess what? I focused on Motown. <laughs> Motown, black story, right? They never did anything with Motown before. Created huh. this pitch. This man, black man, told me, uh, what you got to understand is Nike's global. Motown's local. My dude, Diana Ross, global icon. Stevie Wonder, global icon. Michael Jackson, none of you heard of him. Global icon. And, I, and, and, like, you know, and I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> And I'm having a black man tell me this. This is the decision maker. I'm having him tell me that Motown is not big enough. I went to London, and that's all I heard about was Motown. Motown, 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 Motown. So you, but, and I get it. Nike might be a bigger brand, but to sit there and suggest that Motown is not worthy. Mean, so you mean to tell me, and, he, and his other excuse was, well, you got to understand these kids don't know about Motown. That's the fucking point of putting it in a history collection, right? Yeah. To bring that history face to face with this new generation, you mean so? Okay, so if your attitude is kids don't know about Motown, you think they know about the tribal print from Ghana? No, that's exactly what I was gonna say. They don't know. They don't know shit about Kente cloth, and they don't know about no. you know pop pop stars. They ain't so. got, but they ain't, they ain't the premise though. They just did that shit because it was a lazy <laughs> they, thing for them to do. The, the kids don't know about these retro fours or how they came, but you still re-release them. They'll put them in their front of their face. Yes. They went around with for Fire Red Force. No, they see a game with him with the Fire Red Force. So, but you still put them out. Long story short, and, mm. and, and long story short, Motown kind of leapfrogged me. So now they're trying to do something with Nike directly. I ain't got nothing else to do with it no more. So whatever. Shout out to wow. Motown. I gave y'all. I get that's my fault. I gave you know. Oh, I, to, I evolved them in a, in, in a conversation, and they were just like, "Well, we don't need you no more. You gave us the keys to the kingdom. You gave us all the wow. ideas. We don't need." So shout out to Motown. I hope the shoes sell. I don't, but Woo. you know, Man, whatever. I, I've seen Man that happen people. a few times. I'm yeah, but that's the yeah, but point is. We appreciate. You. But point is, you know, you got people like me that's taking time out of their day to create uh, a product for you, or ways to connect with people for you for your brand to thrive. I think for them to kind of be like, well, you know, you're not big enough, or you know, like okay, like being a celebrity is only going to get you so far. That might work now, but what lasts for a lifetime is the stories. 
You know, it's unfortunate. Travis Scott's not going to be famous forever. <clears throat> yeah. It's unfortunate, but I think it touches on a lot of the stuff we've covered in this interview. But, you know, is Nike too big to fall or like do they take advantage of people? At the end of the day, the, the business of nature in itself is ruthless. Yeah. Um, I know if, if they take your idea, it's unfortunate. But, like we see it happening all the time or like there's even that thing with Caro going on. No, I'm not even mad about it because I, you know, I, looking back at it, I'm like, well, but it's Nike, to be expected. But, but, but Nike failing isn't their lack in sales or they're decreasing in sales. Nike's failure is when competitors continue to rise and gain on their heels. That's True. their failure. That's on things they can failure. on things so they that's can address. Their failure. That's when we see their failure. They're always going to make money. We complain, but we all guilty of it on this screen and on this podium that they piss us off, and then we go two days later and buy a Nike shoe, yep. which we need to be more disciplined in our spending with them when we want to hold them accountable, which yep. is an yeah. everyday struggle within itself. So. <laughs> but. Uh, but no, nah, we didn't rambled enough. I, you know, it took a ball. It's almost like three o'clock over here. Um, but no, I definitely want to thank you for making time, man. We definitely got to get you back on the show, man. There's so many conversations we can dive into. Thanks, man. No, I appreciate y'all, man. Thank y'all for real, man. This 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 was big, man. I really appreciate it. Got a prank for that. We small time compared to you. We not in the sneakers at well, me and Dunks are, but never forget. I was gonna say yes, you are. Man. I was. <laughs> <laughs> Never, hey, never, Guru's never, looking at his watch. Like, they I'm never fucking put over my this. picture in there. It's all good. Though. Right, right. They never put my picture. I was at the same photo shoot. It's all good. No, I, I had nothing to do with that. Yeah. Hey, mm-hmm. if Nike's listening, yeah. I could bleach my hair. We could do a little bit different take this time. I'm ready for round two. <laughs> Jesus. I Christ. had my son in too. I guess the black father image ain't want to pull over well. So mm. oh, that's tough. Mm. That's tough. Dang. Why that's you doing tough. like that? <laughs> Nigga, if, there, if there was ever a Kimbo slice type hit, that was it right there. Uh, what you mean, Kimbo slice hit? That, that, that was, was a Kimbo that. slice hit. If they if they didn't Jumpman had his kid too. I mean, it's it's unfortunate. And that is unfor- I, we have a lot of talk. B-roll footage that hopefully will yeah. be used. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's really a lot of B-roll from that. Uh, <laughs> there Jumpman is. wore trophy ball. rooms. That's Jumpman that, that, wore like twenty thousand like dollars shoes and. You know? Yeah, Jumpman had on his red trophy rooms and they still ain't. But you so, would thought you would have thought. Point, wow. point was, I wouldn't take it personally if trophy rooms didn't get featured. Shout out to Jumpman Bostic. The red ones, not even the blue ones. Shout out to Jumpman Bostic, man. OG for real. That, mm-hmm. that, and that's another thing that, real quick, that's another thing that kind of pisses me off. Because here you got a man that's been buying your brand. I mean, supporting your brand from the very beginning. And you can't Forever. even get this man a retweet. a re- You can't even get this man a, a thumbs up emoji. Like, come on. Like, but, yeah, yeah, that's messed up. but yet they'll go chase down you a know, YouTuber. A YouTuber. No offense, hey, hey, hey. But no, you know the ones we're talking about. Not taking yeah, you know, it's you know. It's no, facts. you I mean, know we, we're we on YouTube about. too, but you weren't full time with it. Man, whatever. Like we talking about those YouTubers, you probably know what we're saying. Anyway, and who just gets serious? Oh, I know. Yeah, with. I know exactly. <laughs> I know exactly. And they, they, they're, they're just trying to go for what's hot, you know. They and Jumpman, Jumpman is respected, but if you ask the average 17, 18 year old, hey man, what you think about Jumpman Bossy? They'd be like, who, who? What, what are you talking about? That's the problem. That's, That's the problem. unfortunate. Why fortunate. can't you appeal to the older like? There's the people who buy Jordan brand product or are 35 who like Jumpman. So you can still see you a big enough brand that you giving out one more pair of shoes a month won't hurt you. And let's not act like this dude ain't got a following either. I and, mean, and they, act they, like they, he, ain't he does. Money. He does. And yeah. Act like he, he ain't spend enough money with your brand. And this collection is respected worldwide. I mean, this dude. And that all, stuff yeah. with the clearance outlets, he paid full price. For like it. if if Michael Jordan's mm-hmm. son and Fat Joe and all these other people are taking time out to give this man a tip of the hat to his collection, I don't see mm-hmm. why Nike or Jordan brand specifically uh, is um, yep. being so reluctant to acknowledge him in that way. I say give him a. We collab. need a what you got. I would love a collab. I would love to just see him get a "What You Got" segment. That would be you crazy. Know? Let's make that happen. Oh, thank you. Yeah, and we already know I, that Nike's would be listening. Yeah, let's make that happen. Y'all listening? listening. <laughs> get get Bossic as well. What you got? That would be crazy. I would love to see that. Mm-hmm. But um, mm-hmm. like I said, man, definitely appreciate you making time, man. We're definitely going to connect. We're going to get you back on the show again soon. So for sure. Yes, sir. Man, appreciate y'all. All right, man, yes, sir. Take care. Peace. Yep. Yes, sir. Man, once again, that was. Uh, sneaker insider and content creator, sneaker fetish. And I'm glad that he brought up May's Mental Health Awareness Month because it is, and that's a big deal. Oh, so shout that? out him. Yeah, he did. Uh, that went, yeah, so. that went over my head. Thing. Take uh, care of your mental health people. Yeah. And now we're on getting a therapist. It really, no, real talk. I mean, hey, and, and Royce the Five Nines making um, some headlines, at least locally in Detroit, for pushing mental health advocacy right now and, and getting people proper care. Yeah, th- yeah. therapists so. are good. I tell people all the time, like, you go to the doctor. You don't, you don't want to wait till you go to the doctor 
you want what you get fat to go to the doctor you want to go have preventative care like mental health is that same thing too if you go to the doctor for your heart your arm why not your mind you know what i'm saying right. so what time you? i know you gotta get out of here yeah, i just want to <laughs> read this one story real quick and then we'll wrap it up uh because we haven't done it in a while we got uh this week in stupid uh and an article written by brandon king for sneakershop.com according to court papers uh, and Falls Township police responded to a call at the village of Pinbrook Apartments by a person who had called the police, hung up, and then later called back to say that they had been robbed. Uh, the caller and the man who was with them told police that they had arrived at the apartment complex to sell a pair of sneakers in a transaction that had been arranged online with the male who was later determined to be a juvenile. Uh, the teen snatched the two pairs of sneakers involved in the deal, which were valued at $500 and $700 apiece and jumped into the backseat of a car driven by a 22-year-old woman named Victoria Wilbon. As Victoria attempted to back out, one of the victims hung onto the vehicle. The teen then exited the car, pulled out a knife, and swung, swung it at the victim, causing him to lose his grip on the car and allowing Victoria to drive away. Uh, the teen fled the area before police could arrive. Fueled by information from the 911 call, Multiple marked and unmarked police units engaged in a traffic stop that same day, resulting in Victoria be t being taken into custody. She was arraigned in district court by Judge Mick Petrucci and put in jail on a $100,000 bail. What about the people who took the shoes? They were the ones that took the shoe. No, the girl, the driver what? got, what about the two She was people? the getaway driver. The guy? Yeah, the I guy. I guess they got him, but because he was a juvenile, they can't put his name out there. Or he might still be out there. I don't know. But that's, first of all, if you're going to buy online, go to a reputable site. Meet somewhere. Don't meet no. Uh, no you can meet at police stations that have designated I was gonna say, areas. Don't meet at nobody's house. And don't if bring someone says, I got warrants, I'm not going there, don't fucking sell them your shoes. Don't meet in alleys. Don't meet at shipping docks. Don't meet, you know what I'm saying? Like, do not meet where people normally get stuck up at. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, just, just be smart about this shit. The tough guy shit's not worth it. Like, if, it, if it's too good to be true, don't do it. When in doubt, the answer is no. Exactly. So, I mean. And, My and mom honest, taught me that. And honestly, I mean, I know the world was closed, but, you know, if you got shoes that are valued at $500, $700 a piece, wait till a sneaker event or just sell it online. Save yourself the trouble. You know, like, mm -hmm. we read too many of these stories of people get, I mean, luckily nobody got hurt. He pulled out a knife. I wonder how, you know, it's not a knife. Um, Down I gotta, under. I got to do that every time somebody <laughs> pulls out a knife. That's not a knife. This is a knife. Um, but luckily nobody was hurt. It's not worth it, man. It's, it's shoes at the end of the day. So on that note, because Guru got to get the hell out of here. We um, are I gotta get out of here. Yeah. Thank episode 291. <laughs> um, glad to have Sneaker Fetish on here, man. Hopefully Gino comes back sometime soon. No, he's here. He's always oh, here. He's, yeah, my bad. He's sitting right here. My bad. Sorry. Uh, on that note, we are nine episodes away from 300, so hopefully we'll be able to continue this countdown. And uh, shout out to Woodward Sports, and we will see you guys next week on our next show. Be right. out. Peace. What up, though? Another great show by the crew over there at the Sneaker Box underscore podcast. Jump in, Bostic. I'm back with the word for the week from the basement of the Jays. You learn a lot from failure that leads to your success. Don't be afraid to fail because failure builds character, strength, and makes you more and more hungry for success. Success will come in time. You can't press it. You can't make it happen. It will happen on its own. Let success come when it comes. And you'll know it, you'll feel it, you'll see it. All right, it's your main man, Jump Man Bostic. I'm fading to the back from the basement of the Jays. I'll catch you next Saturday with another word for the week from Jump Man Bostic. Peace.